Today is Wednesday, April 7, 2004. This is a meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. This is a test. It is April 7, 2004. This is a Franklin County Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, I'm, I'm looking at something. You got the bid opening here. About Good morning. The oh, horses in that hotel. The well, you're in for 945. How'd you? Nine o'clock. Well, they're yeah. all oh. over the parking lot. <laughs> well, and and across I the street from the you know, I can't. hotel. I think that's going to be. I, a it detriment. just wipes me out when they do this. Well, I think they don't tell you to change the schedule. Out front I just can't think now because it's it's really going to be an eyesore of the whole facility. Nine o'clock. In case I, I look back in my memoirs to know we when you showed up. I think we have to lay the ground rules and but, put up our signs to start with. And uh, the, the horses absolutely can't be in the RV. And police it. And they cannot be in the parking lot. They cannot be in the parking lot of the hotel. No. Other they're not supposed to be in the parking lot at all. They're supposed yeah, to be. they were. Does this mean they can't? Well, does this they mean they're they, in the parking lot, Fred? Does this they mean? Are, yeah. In the back parking lot. They've no, got a parking lot. Not my question. It's important. <laughs> Rich told me that the horses are all Wait. Uh, does this mean that if there is a cause for celebration, there can be also no horses in the hotel? <laughs> no, well, that would be DJ's call. Okay. Uh, no, but the, the parking lot right there by You're the pretty restricted building, to the horse that was all the way there. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's and in the out. gravel across the street. Yes. That's what but that's the only place they were. Didn't you tell me you went out there and right away there was a horse tethered to one of the... Well, that's where they pulled in. Yeah, we, oh. the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were two, and Rob, Rob called and got them out of there. Called Rich about six or something. Called the police. Oh, she yeah. called the sheriff. Yeah, they showed up about two in the morning. They make us make big diapers. For I us. don't need you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where, what is today? Okay. Wednesday, We're April seventh. Oh, have we already done uh, the the office stuff? Well, oh. we've got another schedule, huh? Is that right? Is this we got a different schedule than I've got here. You're not on my schedule, Guy. No. I got moved up. I got moved up. Because oh, for Pete's Guy, sake. Guy is on his way to Shillings, so he wanted to get moved up and meet with you as soon as possible. And I only had three things. So, so did anybody tell Dave, and he's here cooling his heels and trying to get a lot of stuff to do. Yes. Not? Yep. Okay. okay. I am. All right. <laughs> All right. Guy, then Dave. you're on. Okay. Vouchers. Do we have a motion for vouchers? I move for approval of the... Vouchers for County Road, Motor Vehicle and Public Works, Solid Waste Fund, and the probation crew as specified. I second the motion. All in favor. Aye. Right. First one is County Road. 326000 There's a couple of big uh, contractor payments in there for both uh, East Foster Wells and Crest Lock. The next one is Motor Vehicle for 35000 I didn't really have a chance to review them, but uh, the biggest item there was the cutting edges for our blades, and they're about $10,000 into that. So. I think we only have one for the weather crew for the probation for mini storage rental fee, and same with solid waste, uh, a couple of annual rental fees, and uh, reimbursement for heat boots. Pete's boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ruined a pair of boots about a year picking up that oil and stuff. My retirement job. <laughs> Yours? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want it. It's too messy. <laughs> well, I hope we're not going to have you retire here anytime soon. You know, is that something uh, you were planning right away, guys? Yeah. Not these guys retire so young anymore. I can't believe it. I got Red pays me that money owes me. I could probably retire next year. Hold your breath. Guy on the striking contract. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I mean, you're going to uh, notice the contract and that you're going out to bid on that? Yes. Um, when, when do you anticipate them to actually come in and start doing the strike? Now, let's see. Bid opening is the 3rd of May, Fred. Taking a couple weeks. So probably towards the end of May. I'm just kind of wondering. You know, we've got some stuff out of track and maybe the courthouse that okay. maybe we can kind of get a, a, sure. a change order at the end to it where they can come and do some striking for us. And uh, <clears throat> pretty sure we're still doing it. I have to check with Pam, but we're doing it in two phases. 
up until we might have switched back last year. Uh, so we might not get striping done until after we get chip sealed done, mm -hmm. which is going to be July or August. Well, that'd be more better for. Let me check with Pam and see. Okay. Anyway, striping uh, estimate for this year is about 140,000. A little bit more than what we usually do on striping, but uh, we chip sealed and glade north, so we have to do all glade and it has edge stripe and. Uh, it's also the year that we had straight uh, the PK Highway to edge stripe road and runs the And we're just going out to bid just for the striping contract. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I move we go out for bids for the striping contract uh, under County Special Maintenance Project 54268 with bids due back at 9.45 a.m. May 2nd, 2004. I'll second the motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Huh? Those go with her. Oh, do they? Mm-hmm. Are oh, you going to take them back with me? Oh, no, these aren't yours. Are oh, those aren't mine. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have. Other business, but uh, everybody um, has a show am to, or you're not? No, I canceled out. Oh. I got, you know, this is a bad weekend. Week. It is. It's Easter week, and, and um, I got too much going at church. You know, I have complained every year about them having that on Good Friday. I don't think that's really cool. But well, whatever. we always have Monday, Thursday dinner, and uh, I'm in charge, so I've got to be there. <laughs> in absentia. Oh, you're going to be there, guy? Yeah. Would you watch the county administrator and see these things? <laughs> I don't know. That's a pretty big task. That's, that's, spe that's yeah, a special assignment. Yeah, watch the canary here. Did that's a special assignment. That's a special assignment. That's a renegade Gerald's, I mean, Gerald's running with it. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, just don't get now. us talked about, you guys. Okay, you guys. Well, yours, I guess. Hey, I've got nine minutes. Planning. Okay, I move approval for the consent agenda. <laughs> Do I have a second? I move for approval of the consent no, agenda. No, I just did it. You have to be second. I second the consent agenda. Aye. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Anybody? <laughs> Great. Well, but I just can't. I'm wondering if you can't if wait for these people to go with no one in the office. Well, we both secretaries need to move for approval of these two. Not that I'm aware. Yeah, they are. Both are they secretaries are going to be oh, part of the um, week. And yes, we need to do those. Well, two. let's wait till we sign and some Greg consent agenda. Greg is out sick. And yeah, one it of gets the, too convoluted if we. Scoot through it real fast. I would have that. He didn't say anything to me about that at all. He just said that Greg was out, and he wanted to know, he says, well, do you think I should still go? And I said, well, you know, Jared, I mean, uh, at times, Dick German went to those things. My planning office didn't have a plan for a few days. I don't see why it should affect you from going up on this particular time. Well, I'm just thinking about how thin. I'm not aware of anybody else not being in the office. We can't close the office down. You mean there isn't anyone in the office? Well, there's going to be Jerry and, and Jim and um, one building inspector. Well, so I wasn't aware of that. He didn't say a word to me about that. Sherry's dad evidently is going to get some big award, and she asked for Thursday and Friday off to go to Lake Oswego for that. Mm. And, um, what's what's the up for, you know? Pardon? For award, you know? I don't know. He was a longtime school principal for uh, the school district down there. And Rebecca what? And Rebecca took the week off. Well, when, so there's I nobody there? Have to ask about it, it's two days. Um, Jim and Jerry are Well, I guess it can be handled, but I... Go up and slap him around with the bread. Well, I mean, I would have thought that maybe the, he, she, he would have asked Rebecca to come back in for a couple of days. Well, I'm just wondering when did this thing And she probably, Sherry? I don't know. Is that just real recent or something? I, I thought it was about this yesterday. I don't know. Perhaps a moment. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't be nosing into it, but... Um, no, I well, think who should then, yeah. Neva? The you chairman. But it, it kind of worries me if, if they're that short down there because sure as the world, something. Some well, I guess they can just um, 
you know, you do what they can do and then have people come back. Well, if you that to him, you just won't go. Do we have all the contracts in signed on that? Think, I don't think we did. I think uh, we got one minute, other. Guy. Guy, hold. We got one more. What are you doing? Hoarding the contracts there, Mr. Brock? Somehow it got mixed Screwing in up here. The system? Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. okay um, I move ready. approval of current expenses in the amount of $239,271.53. I'll second whatever that motion was. All Current expense. All in favor. Aye. 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 Don't try to criticize me, Mr. Brock. I'm in fine form today. Actually, sounds ornery. A little bit uh, testy. Yeah. Oops. We weren't in session me? yesterday. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out there and you'll sign it. Sure, anything that's put in front of me, I'll sign. We have proof. <laughs> that's how we got an escalator in the court. <laughs> I need a dishwasher when we go back. Oh, oh, in the court, you know, yeah, because that's no where, Fred. Mm -hmm. You know, I when I too. got a dishwasher at my house, the colds, we sure had less colds. We always thought maybe that was why. Right? in hot water. Mm -hmm. I think that's very true. Okay. We have an award of bid for our legal notices. For the newspaper? For the newspaper. One? Just one. I guess the Herald so is up trying to beat the graphics. And so, is this a hearing or anything? Or just we just yeah, do just it? a bid opening and... What are we going to do if the if the uh, graphic goes out of business? If there's not a county newspaper, they're closest. I don't think they're not closest. Oh, I don't know. I think no. all the possibility. Um, when I worked there, it was a so this is who we will award oh, it to. It's a spring right? operation out there. It's always so a possibility. The the bid offer is from the Franklin County Graphic and. Um, $8 per column inch for printing the legal notices for one year on six-point solid type. They can furnish a bond if needed. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to accept the bid? I'll second the motion. Oh, is that a motion? Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay, all yeah, in favor? favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <coughs> Is that the same that was last year? Did you make it in Seems like it is. I didn't look at last year's mm -hmm. Okay, this is the 4th of July parade. But it's the 3rd of July parade this year. Well, is it? Yes. Yeah. The official. On the <laughs> Why is it? Is that a Saturday or something? Or? The 4th of July is a Saturday. Well, with the I mean, the 3rd is a Saturday. The 4th is Sunday. So we're on the down the 3rd. That's what Mr. Brock just said. But uh, Monday is a legal holiday. Yes. So I don't know. I might go. Well, that's up to you if you don't want, if you're not patriotic enough to drive sure. to the Fourth well, of July parade. We'll, we understand. Oh, yeah. We always I thought might, that's the way it was. I might be I will go. gone. Election. That's where right. election is in November. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Would you like me to have Pat talk to you about that again later? Yes. <laughs> okay. It looks there. like that'd be fun to go. To. Well, I usually work in the Looks like it'd be fun uh, to go to. A uh, was that for, you know, the record or something? That statement. Oh him. No, yours. It looks like it would be fun. Oh him. Yeah. Oh him. <laughs> oh his his comment. No, yours. That it would okay. be fun. Yeah, I thought you because it's, it's going to be red, white, and blue one. Oh, isn't it? Okay. Never mind. Can I didn't say anything. I have 45 I seconds. Really <laughs> and just a couple questions. <laughs> April 14th is a Wednesday. I put this in yesterday's board mail. Maybe you want more time to think about it. Oh. Dr. Terry Bergeson, Mid Columbia Education Alliance, is um, going to have the State of Education Washington State's new graduation requirements meeting. Are you guys interested in attending? I don't think I, I, I missed something. Terry Bergeson. You should. Listen. The April 14th, it's a Wednesday. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Fifth Assembly is having their special ribbon cutting ceremony, and they are inviting all um, community leaders to come. And where is that? That is when? April 15th on Thursday. And did I hear their new auditorium has 4,800 seats in 1400. it? 1,400. Oh, 1,400. I thought somebody told me 4,800. So they that just, that is a huge building over there. It is. And both of you ladies have the uh, transit meeting that evening, too, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you are cordially invited to attend the spring workshop of the Three Rivers Community Roundtable. And this is going to be on Tuesday, May 4th, 7.15 in the morning to 10 o'clock. I have gone to that several times, but I'm going to be busy that time, so I cannot go. That's on a Monday morning, is that? It is no. No, it's on a Tuesday morning. What is it again? It's it a community is. round table. Three rivers. It just... Basically, camera connection thing. Uh, so that what are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. No, for me. Uh, I won't get in trouble for marking you down you as no. <laughs> I am done today. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Can I get you to do March 22nd and March 31. I so move. Minutes of March 22nd and 31. No so second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. David's going to grab his chance here now. <laughs> How are we for time? Heck, we don't know. Okay. I'll <laughs> see. <laughs> I'll look here. I'm so confused now. But I think the morning's almost over. Hey, you already wasted, started. already wasted about five minutes of your time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Well, it looks like we've got 9.15 to 9.30, and then the prosecutor. Okay. Who might not come in. And, but they might not come. Yeah, she's going to check and see if they have anything for us. I don't have anything, do you? I don't. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, kind of a disjointed meeting <laughs> starting, I think. <laughs> well, I'm glad I had a little extra time to come over this morning because I walked up to the other place and then figured out real quick you guys had moved down here. So. Oh, I thought you'd been here before. Well, I've been here years and years ago. No, but right? not since we no, left here. Uh -uh. No, oh, haven't you? Uh -uh. Well, join the crowd. Every once in a while I come down here so I can come straight here and then turn and go to the courthouse. <laughs> I drive by habit, too. Um, <clears throat> in mental health, we have our contract amendments out to the providers. Um, we have abandoned the system of level of care that we use for about nine or ten years to direct revenue into our agencies. That has to do with the new federal waiver that the state has signed and the way that clients access services. And um, the level of care system we had was based on previous state criteria, um, although we had amended it and probably tried to get it to be more clinical than the state's version was. It didn't make sense to maintain our three-tier system when the state is moving and the RSN will be moving to a two-tier system. So essentially what we did <clears throat> was take a look at the money that we had paid the agencies for the last eight months, and then we rolled in some uh, programs that we would have previously called carve-outs. That would be the Javin House, the Wilson House, um, Cullum House, um, and a couple other specialty programs that we had special revenue lines for. Can I interrupt just a minute, Dave? Mm -hmm. Just real quickly, can you explain to me the three- and the two-tier system, what you're talking about? Well, um, the three-tier system, basically you had people that were chronically and seriously mentally ill um, that would have been the, well, acute and um, chronic would have been your third tier. So you just consolidation of the... Uh, <coughs> Essentially, they're consolidated, and um, the level one, which would have been the least disabled, 
are really the level one of the new two-tier system that the state and RSM will be using. So they're roughly analogous. Two and three would have been collapsed into the new two. So uh, that's probably the easiest way to say it without getting into diagnosis. So you got oh. mild and you've got... <coughs> you got mild and everybody else. That would be oh, one yeah. way to characterize it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we worked with Vic Roberts at the RSN uh, to take a look at the um, increases in uh, service units that the providers need to make. Um, I had mentioned to you before there was quite a gap between the service units that our RSN system and our local providers are showing in the computer system and the amount of revenue coming in. And th this was an issue around the state, not only here, in the last actuarial study. <clears throat> um, so our contracts contain uh, significant increases of services that are going to be required. It depends according to the provider. We have basically um, added up all the funding we've paid them in the last eight months and put that funding in their contract and are giving them a monthly grant. So uh, as we move into this new system and try to figure out what it is, we simplified our revenue stream for now. Um, The, I'm going to kind of jump down to the third item under mental health, um, and there's a briefing paper right be behind the agenda mm -hmm. uh, for you. <clears throat> um, this is a briefing paper that is uh, being sponsored by the RSN. It really has its origin in Comprehensive Mental Health Center in Yakima. Rick Weaver put this together, and he's offered it to the RSN, and so the RSN has adopted it. And it has a little bit of modification, but not much. Probably the key thing uh, right now is the fact that there's a nine-month extension. And this is contained on the back of page two. And it's on the second bullet from the bottom. <clears throat> and it's the first little circle there. And that's probably the key thing right now. And the reason that I say that is the last time I was talking with you and I had to go in front of Benton about uh, a week ago uh, to talk with them before the um, Eastern District meeting um, up at Lake Chelan. And at that point, I didn't know the nine-month extension. It had not been published. Um, the contract is clear and in the sense that the Medicaid money that is comes in the RSN contract in the future is going to be able to be used only for people with welfare coupons. That's a major change in the system. We do have some money in our contract that isn't used to match federal money, and it's what we would call state only. <clears throat> we also have a certain list of mandated services that we believe are going to require substantial use of state-only money. What that means is we don't know how many clients without welfare coupons in the future we will be able to serve in the mental health system. If you read the contract today, it's clear. It says that the money can only, the state money, which is used to match federal, which is the bulk of the money, can only go for welfare coupon clients. The transition period is going to be used for a couple of things. One, we have some savings we generated under the old fiscal constraints, and there was a question about who could we spend those on, and that's been clarified. We can spend those on people without welfare coupons during this time period. The other question is, <clears throat> what does the state want the welfare system, or I'm sorry, the mental health system to be for people without welfare coupons? Are those people that have money or don't even get in the welfare, how do they not get in the welfare system? And which which category of people are these with no welfare coupons? Or is there a category you can Financial. put them in? Probably, yeah, but which way? there's a number of people that are not eligible for welfare coupons. Probably people between 18 and 55 without a significant disability okay. that don't have kids. All right. That's probably the easiest way to say yeah. it. Yeah, okay. So it's your it. just general adult population. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the mandated services is crisis response. And I, I guess one of the things I need to say is we probably don't know more 
answers to questions than we do know answers to questions right now. So there's a whole list of questions at the state that they are devising answers for now that the waiver is signed. And they had given us some answers in the last three weeks that now need to be reformulated and resubmitted because the waiver changed those answers. Those answers are not legitimate. So this really is a period of a lot of other things and will be for the next three months or so while we sort some of this out. Um, we have put together a all-provider meeting, which is probably one of the few times we've had these across the RSN. It's going to be bringing in over 20 providers from the 11 counties on the 14th, and it's going to be held at the Kinnewick Library. And for the next number of months, I believe it's through July, we're going to be having an all-provider meeting once a month where we're going to be bringing in the directors, the fiscal administrators, and all of the senior clinical staff. So this is probably going to be a meeting of between 60 and 80 people. Um, where we're going to start talking about some of these issues. It's very clear that the RSN is going to have to look more like a corporate mental health system and less like 11 county system under the RSN structure. And I can't tell you exactly what those changes are going to mean. It could mean that funding is reallocated and realigned according to mandated programs across the RSN. There's been a funding formula in place uh, for years um, that it probably have to be revisited and may have some changes to it. Um, there are some small counties um, that have funding allocations that are, if you will, out of line with their population base. But one of the things we did many years ago is make a decision not to decrease fundings to certain counties and cause those systems to decline when we moved into the RSN structure. That commitment may not be able to be kept in the future, and we may have to um, um, reduce funding in certain areas. These are things we don't know now, but these are things we're talking about that would not have been a conversation item a year ago. So it just gives you an idea of how much um, unsettling there is right now and how we're going to have to revisit some of the basic commitments to the system. Now, is this because of all these initiatives and everything, or is this because of a a different direction that the well, whoever makes these decisions is, wants to go? I think that what is happening is is really a different initiative at the federal level. Um, if you recall, I had mentioned a number of months ago that the federal government is uh, highly concerned about how the Medicaid program has grown around the states. Um, there is a lot of language um, from Health and Human Services to different um, federal subcommittees questioning the state's use of the Medicaid program, and uh, they kind of put it in quotes, but created bookkeeping by the states to get into the federal pocket. So I think there's a clear agenda from the federal government to restrict Medicaid payments and restrict who they can be spent on. And the Balanced Budget Amendment Act is having a role in that. The federal government restricting who we can spend the uh, RSN Medicaid payments on has a big role in that. The fact that um, they are now saying that their money, quote unquote, um, can only be used for people with welfare coupons is a big restriction. It will force the state and the legislature to redefine what they want the mental health program to be for people without welfare coupons, if any, and fund it. It's clear that we can't move and slide federal uh, state money using being used to match federal money over to people without welfare coupons. It's in the terms and conditions of the state contract, and it'll be in the RSM contract. Now, I have to say that um, in about, I think it was 92, for old history, when we had two funding streams, one for people with coupons mm -hmm. and one for people without coupons, and those funding streams were moved together and then put under the current PHP payment system, there were many warnings to the state that you're running this risk. Well, 10, 12 years later, it, if you will, has caught up with us. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> So I don't know. We can either take the view that we got 10 or 12 years' use of the money or we can take the view that it was a, a missed system design from the beginning. 
but there were people around knew, that knew the risk we were taking when that happened. Um, and this is happening in other states, too, from the federal government in a variety of ways. And other state systems are seeing restrictions on how uh, Medicaid is allowing their money to be used. So mm-hmm. they're tightening up the strings in a lot of different ways. It doesn't make it any easier. Um, the one hope that is out there, um, it, and it's the last bullet on page two, is um, there is a mental health task force that's been convened by the legislature, and the governor's office is staffing it. The lady's name is Carrie Burrell that is going to be directing that. I was actually in a meeting with her last Thursday. Um, The Mental Health Council, the RSNs, and various stakeholders are on that meeting. And through the summer, they're going to be debating what the system should be and what the fiscal package to be presented to the legislature will be. Will Jean be part of that? Jean is on that. Yeah, she's very much part of that. Um, And uh, it's just going to have to wind its way um, through that process. Um, to me, this is such complicated stuff. Um, it, it is right now, and the difficult part is we just don't know a lot of answers to be giving out. It's clear the system is going to be different when we're done. There may be some programs that we can no longer fund, that we can't afford to, that we value. And there can be a lot of controversy about what ultimately happens. Um, at the RSN level and the local level, the biggest issue that we have to deal with right now is building up the service units that the providers are giving to the Medicaid coupon clients so that there's enough service units in the computer to justify the level of funding coming in. That's the biggest issue we have to deal with. If we were improperly spending state federal money on low on, on non Medicaid people without people without coupons, we probably would be spending around a million to two million dollars improperly and could risk losing that. At the RSN level, if we don't build our service units up to the right level, we could be risking somewhere between eight and ten million dollars. And the issue is the old waiver did not capture residential services in it. And this RSN puts a huge amount of money into residential services, both in Yakima and Tri-Cities and elsewhere. Um, Each one of our residential programs is roughly a half million. And it's close to that on what we put into Wilson House, too. So you can see that right off the bat, a significant amount of our uh, funding goes into systems that we're not capturing service units, that will now need to capture service units. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of uh, stress and pressure on the providers to improve. Mm-hmm. Um, our contract contains conditions that, and, and we've used fairly soft language, where the counties may reduce their contract if the service units aren't produced. We didn't say shall. We didn't say that on purpose because there's, there's computer issues, there's tracking issues, um, and I think there's actual production issues. And we didn't want to get in a position where there were legitimate issues and um, we would be forced to do something that we still wanted to continue working with the provider on. But we also wanted language in there so that if ultimately someone is not making the grade, we can move money around. So um, RSNs are in different um, places around their finances. Some RSNs don't have any free state money at all now. This RSN is somewhat fortunate we do have a little room. Um, I think I'm out of time, so if you want me to wait and, and if there's a few yeah, minutes, Steve, I can jump I'll back in. What Steve has for us. I have five minutes for a minute and an uh, executive session to discuss the claim that's it. So. Okay. Okay, I'll step out. Okay. I'm to be in here when we talk about it. I'm trying to be on the Where is Fred? Uh, entertain a motion to um, on the claim. This, uh, make a decision on a claim from Mr. Skull. I think Skull? it's 2004 oh, we, uh, one. To so make the motion, so no, also. Yeah. No, no resolution. I won't make the motion because I have to vote well, the in the affirmative if I make oh. the motion. If you, well, you, if you make a motion, you, you can vote, vote for your motion. You can vote to deny it. 
Nope, not if I make the motion. Not by Roger, Robert Schultz. You can't make a motion to deny something? Deny oh, to deny? I move that, uh, but, well, okay, <laughs> but that's, I yeah. move that we deny this claim. And I'll second the motion. Okay, I'll Aye. Aye. No, you, uh, you can make a motion to deny. Well, you never make a motion to deny. You make a motion to deny. No, I mean, we, we, we make motions all the time to deny. We just make the motion to approve. You're all issued. Ask the. Well, how would you. How would then you, you don't pass it. You don't pass it. You refuse to pass it. Yeah, that's interesting, and I had I wasn't aware. But of that. you know, I know we do, but that's not correct. <laughs> well, I, uh, how would yeah. else would you get it in the record? We will. We will just put that the note. We'll provide a resolution right. then. Want to okay. see the bottom of that? No, I you won't. ask uh, the lady with the white hair. <laughs> no, those are actually But that is because okay. Betty used to teach. Uh, I believe you. Would you want me to assign a resolution number? Yeah. Or do you yeah. want? Yeah. yeah, let's do we that. We put it on the consent agenda for Monday. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure it gets done. Okay. That's it. That's the letter. Saying no? No, that's just the letter. What's the letter denied? Oh, okay. But we'll do the letter, too. Thank you. Yeah, the letter is important when you get it out. Yeah, so we'll do the letter. Yeah. On, on behalf of the commissioners, mm -hmm. but to assure the uh, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. We have some more time for Dave, so if you want to send me in. Unless you had questions, I didn't leave you any question time for you. I don't uh, have any. I don't have I don't have any. You know, Frank, do you guys, do you have anything else? Oh, okay. oh, yeah, I tell you, I don't know how he keeps that stuff straight. That is so, so complicated. What, what he does. Is doing? Yeah, what well, he, he does. he works it every day. I know. I said, you I don't know about I don't, you I don't and see. your presentation, because I'm not sure that I but understand anything anymore. But I don't see this going in a good anymore. direction, do you, Dave? Pardon? I don't see this going in a very going positive good direction, direction for people, do you? I you mean, see a way around that we're not going to end up not hurt. being able to serve think? some people that we have served? Yes, we're, there are people that we have served that we probably won't be able to yeah. serve in the future. See, That's true. Um, we are going to be working on what the actual numbers are. That's a question that uh, Benton County asked me very quickly. And the reason I, I'm not producing numbers right now, and we do have numbers of Title 19 versus not Title 19, mm -hmm. is they're not tracked uh, in a way that we could produce a number that would be entirely reliable right now. The reason is some people with a coupon will lose, they, they get a, and they get a, re-eligibility examination every six months and there's a thing called a spin down where if they have excess income now this is all the welfare system rules not mental health but they lose their coupon or keep their coupon as a result <clears throat> and so depending upon their resources the uh, public assistance system will say you need to incur a bill bills of let's say six hundred dollars in the next six months and then you'll get your coupon back and that's called spin down and so the system, there's a certain number of eligible bills, and usually they're health-related. And if they produce those bills and take them into the public assistance office, they'll get their coupon back. Our computer system doesn't track people according to one or two months off of eligibility and then back on for four. Or it mixes them. And but but so if somebody's mentally ill and they're treated for X amount of months and then they have to be off two months doesn't it set them back? It, it does, I mean, particularly does it? when I mean, I um, they lose their coupon and they can't get their medications, and you're talking medications that are $300, $400, $600 a month, and they have no way to pay for it. What we have been doing in the past is we have a federal block grant at the agency level. We call it flex funds, and the agencies have been buying medications out of the flex funds for these people. And we buy them at the crisis unit for people when we come in contact with them. I sign bills for drugstores all the time. Um, we're going to have to figure out how we continue that, or we're going to have people that decompensate and go in the hospital. I don't think the state wants this to happen, but the issue is going to be where are we going to come up with money for everything? You know, and this is just one more of the requests in front of the legislature. So um, you're going to be hearing a lot about this in the coming months as we try to figure some of this out and get to some decision points. So. 
Okay. You'll probably hear more than you ever want to. What's the second thing, housing? Um, you, you will remember that we got a grant from the RSN, I believe it was about 140, 180,000, and we, we worked with Richland Housing to buy two homes in Richland Small Homes. Those have been purchased. They're ready to go. They need some furnishings. We are taking $15,000 of our savings and amending the Richland Housing contract and placing money in there for furnishings. And that amendment is out to Richland Housing now. Um, we had planned on working with one of our provider agencies, but um, they were throwing up a lot of questions that we believed um, were mostly irrelevant. And um, we got to a point where we didn't want to continue that discussion, so we approached Richland Housing and they were agreeable to um, modifying our original proposal, which we were able to do, and we're progressing ahead. Um, our project really had a design where one of our agencies would uh, manage the houses for us, and so we really had uh, very little administration built in for Richland Housing. In order to keep their costs as low as possible, one of my staff is going to do the bulk of the shopping for the furnishings for the house in collaboration with Richland Housing, and then we'll provide the bills to them, and they'll, of course, bill us. Dave, we bought two houses, you say. Mm -hmm. What did we pay for them? And, uh, they were a little under 50000 each, I believe. They're small, older houses. What, where did the money come from? from it's, it, at the RSN, we put a number about 10 years ago, a million dollars aside to develop housing around this region. So it's out of that fund? It's out of that fund. So it's out of a capital expenditure it, item? Essentially. It, it, it's called a um, residential um, um, development line. So then there is another 900000 in that fund? There is probably about 600000 in that line right now, I believe. Maybe a little more. Was there considerable money that had to be spent on remodeling these? Actually, very little. Um, a little bit of money on one, and the other one is pretty much ready to go. Um, and Richland Housing, I think, did a fine job of finding some places that needed uh, minimal uh, refurbishing. Um, and actually, that was one of the reasons that they were looking for houses that didn't have that level of need, is so we could get them online a little quicker and not, not spend that much money. So each house has two bedrooms. Um, we're talking about um, putting in a full bed in one of the bedrooms and a twin in the other so we can accommodate couples if we run into them. Otherwise, we'd be able to deal with uh, four people total uh, if it's uh, just individual adults. So we think this will be online probably another uh, three, four weeks, um, hopefully um, at the most. Um, <clears throat> this subject's going to jump. How much time do I have? So I don't really know. Okay. Okay. Thanks for uh, letting me back in, actually. So uh, this one's going to... a hard five. <laughs> <laughs> Jump between both CD and mental health. Um, Nueva Esperanza under uh, La Clinic has taken over management of detox, effective the first. Um, we have a meeting with... That's our, that's our facility down uh -huh. on... Down on 7th and Ainsworth. 7th. Uh-huh, 7th and Ainsworth at the end of the park there. Mm-hmm. Um, we are meeting with Carrie Huey Pasqua, who is the director for Nueva, and Octavio, and I'm going to forget his last name, who is the uh, mental health professional slash CD chemical dependency professional. He's got essentially two credentials there, if you will, who is the clinical supervisor for the detox unit. And we're going to be beginning to have a dialogue around um, beefing that system up so that we can do uh, mental health diversions in there where, for people with co-occurring both mental health and chemical dependency issues. Um, we're basically mimicking what some other communities have done. Yakima has been working on theirs for eight or nine years, and it's pretty sophisticated. Uh, Grace Harbor has brought one online in, uh, I think, the last year. Um, Spokane has been working to bring one online for a couple of years now, and uh, it was supposed to go in the spring, and here it's going in the summer. Um, there's a lot of interest in this in the community, um, and we wanted to have a conversation with uh, Nueva so that they could get to the new director, John Twidle, and introduce this subject before it got debated in a public arena. 
there's a group of the public, the arena, uh, Benton Franklin Health Alliance, that uh, the, man, the uh, gentleman heading that up uh, really wants to start a public discussion. We didn't feel it was appropriate to do that without having a chance for the executive director in the way to know what we we're thinking about. So we sped up this discussions with Carrie so that she can get in discussions going in-house so that when this discussion happens later in the month, it's at least had some conversation at the agency that's actually administering the program. We just we would rather that group and the public would wait another month, but it doesn't look like uh, the gentleman working that agenda is willing to. So <clears throat> um, we're going to have to figure out how we can fund that in in view of the new regulations that are going to constrain us, and so that's going to present an added difficulty. Um, I think we can do it. Um, I think a lot of these folks are going to have a mental health diagnosis. I think we'll have to make them a mental health client, and we'll have to track the service units. So to me, looking at it fairly simplistically, I think it's doable. Um, but we're going to have to figure out how to put all that together. Um, there's two audits attached for your information. We had operations and review come in and look at how human services audits substance abuse and developmental disability contracts. And basically, uh, there were no citations. Um, and I'll speak to both of them. Um, I think the one in substance abuse actually made the comment that Diana's fiscal system is exemplary. Um, at least that was in the draft. And, and she does run a real tight fiscal system. Um, the developmental disabilities ones does have a comment in it that um, we didn't do our monitoring at, in a, on the year it was due, but it was mitigated because the, at that point the state was saying we were going to lose our entire employment program, our adult employment program. That's when um, one of my staff left, and I was not willing to fill that staff position only to find out a couple months later we wouldn't have enough funding to keep staff on board. So I just decided that we were going to stop that level of activity. Once that was settled, we did go ahead and hire a new staff person, and she immediately started contract administration or contract monitorings. And so she was actually able to show them the monitoring she had started. And they, they noted that in here. And, and so it was not a citation. Um, they did make a comment on it, though. And it was just, it was just a, a management decision I made. But there was no audit finding. There was no audit finding. They could have, but they chose not to. Yeah. So. Um, but the monitoring of them must be magnanimous, though. So. From the state? No, from the process. You're monitoring these contracts to find out where you are with providers on it. Well, you know, we have monitoring that goes on all the time. Each billing that come in, ha comes in every month has a level of monitoring against what our expectations you are. You pay on the basis of the monitoring, yeah. Um, we, ba we pay on the basis of the services provided. We monitor the billing, and quite frankly, because of the payment cycle, we would be in a position to reduce the next month's billing if there was insufficient data. Generally, what we find is it's a reporting issue. It's not actually a production issue by the providers. Something has gone wrong in the reporting, and there it's usually reconciled within one or two months. I rarely are we... Re in a forced into a position we actually have to pull money back because someone didn't produce. Um, and that was that's what our preference would be. Um, but every month there's a checklist that the staff do before the checks are authorized to go out, and uh, then we do an annual monitoring on top of it. Other than the paperwork, how can you be assured that they're functioning as they're supposed to be? I mean, do you go on site? or The, the <clears throat> annual monitorings are on site, and we pull up client files and we do specific random reviews of data that's been turned in during the previous months. Just uh, supposing someone wants to create a client, though, they create a file client, and they create a series of file clients, and they audit that and they send the information you pay based on those file clients, and they don't really exist. How would you check that? Well, not to say that somebody ultimately couldn't do that, but... The um, clients have, uh, for the most part, um, they start with our assessment center. Now I'm talking about chemical dependency now. 
Um, so the clients start with their assessment center. Our staff have laid eyes on them. They've done an assessment, and then they're referred out to the provider agencies. So county staff have seen each and every one of the people in the, in the substance abuse assessment center. They've been sent by an assessment mm -hmm. otherwise. So you'd have to and, have and people they, in the assessment in cahoots with. And they assess a 1,000 people a year. It would be, what you're saying, it would be difficult. It would be that. difficult. It's not impossible. Nothing's impossible, yeah. but it would be difficult. Somebody's always thinking about a better Well, yeah. if they're going to try to figure out some funding, there must be a better fiscal way to do it because it would be awfully difficult to pull much money down by creating those clients. Each one of them is only worth a couple thousand dollars, quite frankly. They'd have to fake it in the Title 19 system. They'd have to fake coupons. Um, it, it would be pretty difficult to do it. Um, the DD clients, um, they're made eligible by state staff, so they all have state ID numbers. The agencies can't create these people and say they exist. So there's so many different levels and divisions touching these people. Um, it would be pretty difficult to get much of that kind of thing going. Um, not to say it probably wouldn't be impossible, but I'd be a little shocked to find out that First of all, the providers are pretty ethical. Um, there's always well, the someone... has employees working for them. I mean, the provider is just a contractor, and then he has employee employees working exactly. for Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, there would have to be collusion going so far through the system involving so many people. Um, I, I don't think it... You know, we get, we get confidential complaints from agency staff when things aren't going right in agencies. And I would think someone would speak up. That's been our experience. If something gets too far south, uh, someone's going to speak up. They'll, they'll call one of my staff and tell them they need to talk to them privately. So we have that kind of contact, too. Um, <clears throat> got a little information on the drug courts for you here. Um, I want to talk about criminal justice treatment count just briefly. Um, we have reserved the prime use of that funding to support the adult drug court. Um, the numbers of people that are going in are based, are, are meeting our prediction. The spending is not. And so we're having to go back and take a look at clients that are in the outpatient system and convert them to this funding to get our um, expenditures up. Even though the number of people we've assessed and that are going in are on target, the amount of spending behind them isn't. And the reason for that is, is several fold, but primarily <clears throat> a lot of these folks need residential treatment, and we have had to convert them over to another fiscal program to get them into residential treatment. And then when they come back in the community, they stay in that program for about three months. And um, we didn't predict that that would be happening. And so that's one reason the fiscal expenditures are down, even though the numbers are online. And this is really new program startup tweaks, um, and it's happening all over the state. So we are having a little bit different experiences, but we're having to figure out what's working and what isn't and change some things. But our program is pretty... Um, our program is online and functional. Successful. and Yeah, and successful. Um, I listed the burn grant down here for you. That's a new term for all of us. We got advance notice that there's going to be an RFP released by DASA. The burn grant is designed to support drug court treatment. My understanding from Jackie is that the youth drug court is nearing the second end, and I believe the last year of its uh, federal operations grant. And in a sense, this is coming along timely. Um, there's a meeting at the end of the month. I think it's in Moses Lake for the east side. Um, and the grant has to be turned in by the middle of May, so it's a, about a three-week turnaround. I immediately looked for the spelling when you said that grant, on the burn grant. That was I think I'm right, and I don't no, think it's B-U-R-N. No, it isn't, because you told us about it before. Um, <clears throat> Jackie has asked me if it can be used to support case management, which is uh, the staff interacting with the clients from the drug court staffing level. My understanding is that uh, case management is allowable, but under DASA standards, which is really a treatment activity. It's not a drug court support activity. So there are two different kinds of case management. So there's still going to be a lot of pressure.
for funding for the appropriate staff. Um, I have emailed Earl Long and Ella Hanks, Earl's in Olympia, uh, to ask them what other counties have burn grant money so I can contact them and see how they're dealing with this. And yesterday he sent me back four or five counties um, that have burn grant money, and so I'll be contacting them. Is theirs nearing the end of the federal? Well, some have, and that's why they have the burn yeah. grant money. Yeah. Um, well, it seems like... Well, I guess we can't do anything about it, but it's going to be for drug treatment support. If we don't have support for the, the court itself, then you're not going to have a, a program. So I don't know why they tighten up this money so bad. I mean, it seems to me like those of us that are close well, to it should be the ones to make those decisions. Didn't well, we get that money only for a startup and then we're supposed to take it over? Mm -hmm. I think it was a two- or three-year operation. Well, and, and they seem to think that it's going to be client pay, you know, that they feel yeah. that the clients are going to be paying a good share of their costs. But that, that could be. I, good luck. That's probably the way I'm, I'm not going. heavily. If I'm using up all my money on drugs. I mean, yeah, I'm not heavily um, involved in the uh, actual drug court administration, so I'm not sure exactly how they're well, that's putting that together. Well, that's kind of what was portrayed to yeah. us, that once the grants are go away. Well, we're five minutes in okay. our next, but okay. uh, Thanks, you always Dave. have so much. <laughs> Um, when I come back next time, I'll bring back the DD stuff and talk about the new federal waiver they have. Okay. Okay. Super. And maybe we'll know more about it in another month. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. There's lots of unknown Bye. questions there, too. All right. Thanks. Thanks well, for the extra time. Aren't those beautiful colors? Yes. I'm not no. impressed in that art at all. <laughs> Is I like that, the colors, uh, but no. Good work. <laughs> colors? Yes. Oh, how beautiful. That is. That's great. Well, I'll say our mauve colored chairs will not go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we I will show you. I said that. Remember last week yeah. I talked about the meeting recovery? This is something. That I like this one. I'm going to show you oh. something. As I was sitting in my, I had that in my. That's real class. over, we get an extra time. Yeah, yeah, Neva, you're in Frank's bad graces. <laughs> and Fred's. Oh, when he's drank, honey, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, head update. Last weekend we had the team ropers. And they were in and gone. And there were 1,300 of them. Made a mess, and we did the best we can. We cleaned it up, and our next clients the, the, oh. the what is it, the Mid Columbia? Yeah. I was out there, like I said, I was out there on Sunday, and there was a mess, but they got it cleaned up quicker than I ever recall them doing it. Yes. And it was much better out there. I've never seen it as nice on that uh, gravel as it was. They did a good job, and they were in order. That was real good, I thought. Thank you. Thank you. The effort to put into that, and it showed, and anyway, that's. That was done. Uh, also on Saturday night, we had a dance, and it ended up 32, almost 3,300 people, and that was very good for us. Our rent alone was $11,000. Oh my God! And wow. Anyway, our, with the, all the revenue streams, it was $28,000 for the weekend. On that wow. Saturday. On Saturday. Saturday night, our alone. revenue from the of all sources from the dance was $28,000. Oh, okay, now mind. what names are affiliated with this? The Who's biggest name was Prima Vera. Well, That's not a man's the name. Promoter. Oh, the promoter. That's yeah. Noe. Noe, no no okay. From yes. up in oh, from Brand New York. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I got he's it. been consistent with us. Mm -hmm. He has. That, that the good. other promoter yeah, like. tried to, to muscle out. Yeah. So, anyway. All right. So it was, you know, we haven't got all of our costs in, and certainly we're not going to net that. I would, but it was a, it was a very good payday. That's for a us good gross on it. Yeah. Let's have another one. Well, you know, we've been waiting for two years for yeah. this size again, or that uh -huh. that level yeah. of show. Yeah. So we finally got one, and it was a, it was a good one. There were no issues as far as just the normal stuff. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. no Issue. Well, it looks like he's going to have another one in April, mm -hmm. 24. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the same issue or the same situation. Now, I don't know who the entertainers are, so that could 
that could be a thousand people or it could mm -hmm. be three thousand. Yeah. God, that was good to get that many people in there. Yeah. So we did that in addition to the team rovers going on at the same time Saturday night. So what did we make on the team on the team roving? I, last year, when it was all said and done, you remember we did those profit and loss statements yeah. on all the equestrian events. Our net on that event was seven hundred and fifty dollars last mm -hmm. year. That was by well, far the worst. What was the gross on it? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I don't remember. I'm just thinking in the bottom line uh, as far as where we had. Because I know we didn't have any concessions on that. We had concessions. This year. Oh, this year. we Last year we didn't include the concessions because it was with the quilt show at the same time. So it was mm -hmm. difficult to ascertain yeah. how much the ropers added to that quilt the quilt show um, food service. But they have their own, time, own out there this we've year. We've got another group to come in because what we have found is our profit margin goes in the tank when we have to staff the kitchen and the stand all day long for three different days yeah. to the level that he wanted it. So we, we're getting a 20% profit, just a check. So that, so that truck that comes in out back that's, is... We get 20% of that just here. That makes so it easier. It makes it easier, and oh, it's yeah. about the profit that's... Probably better than if we would have done it ourselves. Went for and sure a lot easier. They appear to be happy with it. So good. Um, I think the only thing that's new is the uh, Easter egg hunt on Saturday. That's uh, yolks out in our front, in the grass lots out there. So we wanted to pull something together on that. But it's another the quarter horse show, the Kaha meeting, um, the BLM horse show. We talked about that. So. I think we talked about everything. Is Jokes a public Easter egg hunt? Yes, I believe it, it is. Yeah. Mm. But, but now for this quarter horse deal, now they're not going to be tying their horses up to our RV at all. No. Well, that's part of the deal. They get the, Only for they get a the corral them back. Only for a second. We will, until we will do answer. everything we can to keep those animals out mm. of that. We need to have it signed back there somehow so that they yeah. don't go in. We can find them, but that won't do us any good. You've got to collect it. And uh, Well, and plus, you know, you can't. If if you don't have a sign of some sort, they can always say, well, we didn't know, yeah. even, no matter what. We, we need to get it signed so they'll stay out of that thing. Mm -hmm. It's fenced on three sides. They just got that one area. They yeah. really no come horses. in. Okay, next thing I, I got there. Thank you. The next thing on the agenda is a tower cam update. Um, I talked with, with the KNDU oh, people. I just wanted to say mm -hmm. the Hanford Health and Safety Expo, they come back. They are coming back one day shorter event, okay. but they are coming back. But last year, didn't they indicate they, they weren't? Did. They did. Oh, okay, so that's good. They threatened us, but we didn't. Well, that was a pretty good number, as I recall. Yeah, it is. It's a very good event for us. Yeah. Okay. Well, why were they going to come back? Was that the one funding. where they said, oh, okay. Hampered funding. Mm -hmm. the, okay, Tower Camp. The tower Camp, just right behind there, is what they say it will look like when it is up there. That's the, the placement, the size. Is that the deal there? Yes. That doesn't amount to too much. Boy, that doesn't look like very <clears throat> much, but. Um, no. Got it, that's all. That Just that second deal with the square on the top of yes, it? Yes, that's it. That's all it is. That's great. It won't lie there. It won't blow over. They say it will not. Apollo has been come, has well, come in to take a look sturdy. at it. So they are and that's on the arena. That's on the When's arena this going to happen? It can happen by mid-May. Mid right. It may actually happen before that. I can't but Again, I have received, uh, I've talked with Darren, and he has approved it. They said as far as legal issues, there are none on that contract that they've given us. Just before I came here, they told me that it could be ready to go mid-May, mm -hmm. as soon as mid-May. So yeah. it'll end at the uh, Autoplex on the end of April, April 30th. They're done at that point, and then they would renegotiate. They would come over and do the work. Oh, and there. I thought you meant till our next April 30th. No, okay. No. I see. The Autoplex yeah. contract, is, they're done as end of April uh -huh. 30, and then they would set right. ours up. Do mm -hmm. some preliminary work and go with it with that. So next Good. week I will have a resolution for you to go ahead and, mm -hmm. and go forward with this. Okay. Yeah. okay. There's no issues. We have had two requests in the last week out of the blue. The banks wanted to put in ATM machines to crack. Good. Then we can put a casino in. Would <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. we get any any um, rent? Uh, 
break off from the outer well, whatever. Well, I think the only way to fair way of doing <laughs> it is go out okay. with a proposal and see who would give us. Who would be interested? Yeah. Yeah. What if we owned our own? Can you do that? We don't have. We put money. Can you in? do that? Yeah. Oh my. I, I would want to do that. Yeah, Fred, with all due respect, <laughs> with all due respect, I think I want to stay it's away. I don't think we're going to have the volume through there. I might be surprised, but I I have seen that, that it's more of a convenience for the, for people. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they'll spend more money at concession stands and such, but in the end, it really doesn't yeah. help you a whole lot. Well, it's another money I wouldn't want to. Just another sure cash handling either. issue and mm. another machine that can go bad. <laughs> I think an ATM machine would be, yeah. be a nice addition. I think we'd know where we would put it. No, right, just, <clears throat> okay. we'll we'll make that adjustment, but we'll go ahead and, and put a put a because RFP with the RV there. park that might be something beneficial too mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. You know, one of the scams that they're doing out there now, and you may already know scams. About, scams. Scams is that uh, ATM companies will come in and set up ATMs and they'll fill them up with cash and everything, and then people will come in and put their debit cards and their credit cards, put their put their key, you know, their their uh, access codes to it, and they're actually taking those codes. Yeah, they'll give them the forty, sixty, hundred, and twenty dollars what they want, but then they'll turn around and take every dollar right out of their account. It's a it's a dummy ATM. Oh. I guess the, in a, in a, well, that's pretty functions. sophisticated. Isn't yeah, it? but it functions. Properly, they walk off with what they asked for. They leave the machine there, but everybody that's used it, they've taken every dollar out of their account. How can you overcome that, Brad? I was just going to say you have to make sure that you're using credible, 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 mm. creditable banks. You're one of them. One of them is the new bank that we come well, out from. That's still with them. With that presence. Yeah. Yeah, I think. But I think it'd be a good idea and uh, verification on it. Yeah. Well, I think well, where I was kind of looking at that was the low bid, best bid. Probably wouldn't really apply. Yeah. Because just be selective. It could be. That's a proposal. So. Mm -hmm. do we have to have. Do we have to have a city do that for us too? I don't think so. No. We could just I do it. So. Yeah. I think we can. We can go to the proposal. Because I know. Um, out at the fair, I don't know how they did theirs, but they used to have ATM machines up there. And man, they got a lot of complaints when they took them out. Well, they, they still, yeah. yeah. They, and, they, but they I think it was in. with Bank of America or somebody. I think it was. I think it was the bank that basically. I wonder where they could do that. For, in a little community like this, I wonder if that would work, you know, where they come into the dummies. Because there aren't that many banks here, you know. Well, they're, they're actually and they're putting them in like your convenience stores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. it's become quite a scheme. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. So anyway, we got that. I just want to let you know that okay. there's interest and that'd be good. So let's, we'll pursue that. Of course, once I got the $40 out, Fred, I'd have my bank account. <laughs> so with yeah, you don't have to worry about it. We just received the, uh, the new Coyote Ridge contract. So we have been trying to, you know, the staff, to, to evaluate that. Um, to see if we want to continue on since they didn't show up in January and kind of left us high and dry there and then there was even another day with the dust that came mm -hmm. in and so but you know we've got the contract it's due in June but we've got to do some evaluation on that. But you think there's a question it. as to whether it's worthwhile to keep them? I think we need to raise the question and do a real thorough analysis of it. Think of, think really think it through. This is the time we need to be st stuck short as they left us is unacceptable. But we also need to make sure we get it done at a price that's yeah. that we we lengthened our staff to provide for this process. Yeah. And that's well, I think we got we'll we'll evaluate that. I just want to let you know the contracts are in the <coughs> June and we have time for. Amerisweets update. This is the this is the color board. Wow. Um, I'll do respect this chair color matches that perfectly. Oh, does it? Yes. Well, it doesn't lie off without <laughs> We have a disagreement here. <laughs> it's hard to see with this. Well, yeah, it does, but it it does match it. It was a perfect match based on the on the pads yeah, that I had really in my office. I put that right up against it, and it was a dead match to that. And I'm thinking that I didn't expect it. Now, what is that fabric for? This is the drapes, the okay. drapery. It's in those meeting rooms.
if you stand Do we just leave the ones we have it, and use them, or should we again look for recovering and to try to put another match to this? Are you going to have to recover all of your no, shares? No, 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 no. Just, just looking at 300 of them, of them yeah. to, that will fit into this into this color into this space. Well, if you What's recovered your opinion, them, Paul, on this, we want to. If you recovered them, <laughs> what would you look at? Ten or? Well, I don't. Know. I would think. Or the green. The green. You I wouldn't look at the black, so you wouldn't look. No, he is going with the black. This is his chair that he's putting in. Is it? He's going to have some chairs in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, then I think the green would complement that black. I It, it does match, so need to stand up and look at it. It will match. I don't know if it's going to look up when you're far away from it. <coughs> but match. you see, I'm not sure that it's enough of a predominant mm -hmm. color to... I mean, if it were, if that color were in the carpet... Yeah. Then well, I are, are we recovering the ones we're putting over there anyway? We have some pads that are ripped, torn, uh -huh. faded... Right, you know, I understand that. We take these pads and put a new cover on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be. So they're going to get recovered line. anyway to put I them over there. Line. Line. I could. Could. I don't, we already have enough chairs of yeah. this I know. to go oh. in. So the question oh. is is this appropriate for this, in your opinion, or should we go out and continue our search to find that better match? Are they used chairs? Or are they used what chairs they are or something we've never done? Yeah. No, they're, they're, we've never used inventory. them. No, they've um, been used. So it'll cost oh. twelve hundred dollars. It was I forget, what was it three thousand? I think it was what? what it was. I don't recall. Forty dollars. Yeah, it was forty. Yes, that's correct. It was only your first comment. My first only comment. question is, is that you know, if if you're making uh, say three hundred chairs that aren't going to match our existing chair inventory mm -hmm. out there, um, if you ever need to use those chairs for anything inside the track. Because they are the county's chairs, and now you're going to have oddball chairs. Well, we're going to have to come up with another color that'll that's off this scheme that'll that won't totally clash with it. Well, I'm not even talking about clashing. I'm just talking about two different colored Styles. chairs. You know, you've got 2,500 chairs mm -hmm. set up there, and all of a sudden you got 300 oddball type of things. Okay. I'm just looking at pieces. <coughs> color. We're, we're just talking there. about drapes for now, aren't we? We're just talking no. about the drapes. This is the drapery. Yeah, that's the drapery material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you're yes. talking about changing out 300 chairs to match, to match the drapes. something else. That, well, mm -hmm. no. Drapery matches. This color is... That exists. So you wouldn't no, have... I'm talking about, you're talking about changing out 300 chair colors. Yes. But she's, he's talking about... Well, what, I'm, what I'm asking is, if we would say, yes, that matches, would you be using those chairs or you, would you be recovering chairs to go? We would keep with our existing inventory. Mm. We, wouldn't add, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't go to any other lengths. We're done. We mm. just use these chairs. But it's $1,200 we're talking about. about so it's not a... Well, I think we could try it. Money. And if it didn't look good, uh, we could always... We would have time to... to uh, how long is your well, turnaround well, time to recover? It's need, if it's going to be done in mid-May, we need to get working on it. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. Way. We need to kind of make up a definite mind, though. As well, well twelve hundred bucks Pardon? is twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. We weren't. Right. We're not going. We don't have a contract going. Uh, there may be one on May fourteenth, but I don't think mm -hmm. the hotel's going to be ready on May fourteenth. See, the only I don't. Um, I said so June first. We're going to be lucky. Yeah, the only I color yeah. I could see that. I don't know what would uh, blend beige. with what we've got. The beige, beige wouldn't really blend a with what color, we have. Though. A neutral color is always so good. But, yeah, but it's not going to blend with that very well. I mean, it, it's, I don't know. But, you know, you could always um, make a pattern with a different colored chair with the existing chairs. I mean, like every tenth chair put the... yeah. The different color in, or, might find or every ta every so many tables mm -hmm. stick one uh -huh. that might look really nice. So what I'm hearing is we'll continue the search for a, a better match for the recovery. I think we have a disagreement. I assume these are kind of the color people here. I you know, I I'm not that I get real impatient when I start choosing colors. Pretty soon I'll take whatever's in front of me. So better listen to Nina. She's well. I don't know. That if you should listen to me, but I just, um, 
But I do I'm not it. sure the drapes is enough to bring out mm -hmm. that color that matches in the drapes. I agree with you. You because know, see, I there's agree. The this is a drapery, and that's not a drapery in every meeting room. Yeah, it's not the wallpaper. This is just those, yeah. those the boardroom yeah, and those right. other two. Uh -huh. And, and, and it's not a predominant color in that's the right. drapery. Yeah. drapery. And so I don't know if it, if the chairs would pull out. But, it, but man, it they're using these nice. black ones. Well, I'll tell you I don't right like now. the black. I those like pick, black. will pick up lint. Uh -huh. That you can well, black is one of the worst colors you can have. Just yeah. it'll, it'll pick up everything in the world. I, when I go to hotels, I don't like to sit on oh, yeah. I will. I will continue. And okay. Bring this back. Yeah. Um, I have a couple other things, but I don't think there's anything that that I need to talk about. I, I'm going to wait till next week. So. We'll find out a couple other little things. Thanks, Ray. Is, okay. is that eye still bugging you? Oh, is your eye? It just started. I mean, I've been pretty good, and then that mine got cleared up. I I got Sue's eye drops, and they really helped me. But Once I, I give you the name of it, yeah. but wait till you yeah. get my bill. I don't see Guama on this agenda. It's on other business, but it's not on there. I was told of it yesterday. Good grief. Why don't we let them we come ahead and... Down down. To see you guys. Yeah. I suppose since you're here, we'll have to... Honestly. Yeah, I can tell with that line of malarkey. Okay. Up. It's a pleasant surprise. Up front and center here. Yes. All right. We're up front and center. <laughs> How are the commissioners today? You can tell. Yes. The rest of our conversation. In, a, in a fine mood, I can tell. Yes. But might I suggest crimson and gray is a fine color for that is. any yes, emotion. Yes, yes. That's true. The goal of the biggest item is this. Okay. Uh, the proposed is proposed uh, suggested letter. Uh, basically, the context is uh, <clears throat> oh, Linda Hoffman, we're the counties of uh, Lincoln, I mean, of uh, Grant, Franklin, Adams. Lincoln has sent us a letter. We want to become part of the Guana. What do we do? I, I move, move the approval. I'll second. Okay, hey, all in favor. Aye. 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 Your sales pitch okay. did. Uh, say they're in great mood. Do this letter. Yeah, well, did, Adams got it on their letterhead, and Grant's put it, put it on theirs and sent it to oh, us. So. And, and we need them. Um, and you can just send it to Carol. We'll put it all in a little package. So okay. You can do it at your convenience. Um, Mary, we need to change the chairmanship. Okay. Right. That's the easy part. Okay. This is the I mean, it doesn't make that big deal. Yeah. Right. yeah. But we just yeah. have to. Does Nita now the current chair? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I can never keep track. Until every, she's, we change I, until every she, year. Yeah. At January 1. We until change. she's impeached. Yeah, yeah, we've had a couple of votes that way already, but uh, <laughs> but I I've fought them off strong. Mm -hmm. Yourself useful and hold this deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Mark did make the map. Okay. That's a nice map, Mark. All right. Uh, this is uh, Connell and Ritzville and Moses Lake, East Low Canal. Where's Othello? I see it. Here. Never mind. Okay. Uh, East of the East Low Canal is outside the project, the irrigation project. These uh, pink circles are the ones that are getting water from wells, and the green ones are ones that, that used to be wells but are currently getting it out of the canal on interruptible mm -hmm. contracts. <clears throat> okay. It gets better. Don't go owing oh, yet. <laughs> this table explains the, the acreages, and if you'll notice here, uh, if you put the two together, there's 124,000 acres of ground out there just in this, and it doesn't include Lincoln County up in here, which is also part of this equation, which we're going to figure out how to add. That's what this. you're saying is 124,000 interruptible water. There's 124,000. 110 of it's getting water out of the out of the Odessa sub Yeah, 14, but it's potentially interruptible. interruptible. Yeah, a lot more interruptible on the table yes. than that. Yeah. No. Okay. So the interesting part, though, is, is that in the potato scenario, there's 22,500 acres of spuds I in there. I see that. And if you add Lincoln County in it, my guess is it's going to go up to around 30,000, uh, which is probably close to 30% of the processed potatoes in the basin. Okay, just keep that in mind. This is from Keith Stoffel from DOE in Spokane. This is the famous Odessa sub-area aquifer designated area. The same basic area from here down. It's a small, of course, but but it also adds Odessa up here. There's several hundred wells in there. <clears throat> they monitor 200 of them annually. 
1967, there was a state law that said that once they got down to 300 foot drop, they had to terminate them all. <coughs> okay. Several of the, these are where the concentration wells are, where these colors are. So there's more wells because, and they're older. These are the original ones put back into the 70s. Some of these are later in the 80s and 90s. So I'm just trying to get the title. Sorry. <laughs> Western Water Law says first in time, which means that the one that was put in first has the highest seniority water rights. However, it's, a, it's an academic problem because, in theory, how this would work is the oldest wells, because they're so concentrated, are going down the most. <clears throat> so, when, if you wanted to exercise uh, the way the rules are right now, the, the supposition is, because there's no real good rules, is that as soon as one person's lawyer pursues, I want my senior water rights established, then they suspect that the judge will then, uh, because of junior stout water status, will eventually, not eventually, will immediately close down all wells. So... If you include the Odessa, we estimate, because I haven't got the numbers on we estimate that's 100. Why will they immediately close down? Because the only remedy for the person to have secure water rights is to stay above the 300-foot law. law. And, what and the only there? way to get that is to recharge. The only way for the recharge to happen is to shut down all the other pumping. Okay, what is the um, amount, you know, the 300? How close are they to the 300 now? Many of them are at 500. So they're way below that. Some are. The question, the problem is, is this, the Stoffel in, in Spokane, there really is no rules in state laws exactly how to administer well, this. and they're conflicting, too, first in time, but yet... Not exactly conflicting, but what the problem is, is that there's not there's not a rule that says you'll take an average yeah, or the, okay. the lowest one or anything yeah. like that. It's it just says that. That's all it says. So DOA Spokane, for years, knowing that they've been either at or below the 300 foot level on some wells, didn't know what to do. They just didn't know what to do. They feared in their office that if they started regulating, that the courts would take over and shut everything down. So in fear, they've sat back and done nothing. Now, Paul, you're saying that is, was that, what about these wells here? That'll affect everything? No, no. Um, no this, yes. is, this, is a, this is a state-designated legislative area. Just that one area. And yeah. The, and and, and the, the law that created it was extremely naive. <clears throat> Because it made some presupposed assumptions from 1967 that may not necessarily be true. But it's in law, therefore, you know, since it's in law, you can't change it. The main presumption they made back in 67 was that all of this area sat over one totally open aquifer. Everybody was hooked to everybody else. Mm -hmm. That was that's the basic assumption. So when the when you go to the judge, the way the law says, he's saying that every one of these wells are all hooked into the same body of water <clears throat> that all the rest of the wells are. So what it assumes is, is that in order to get relief for the one that's got the most drawdown, you have to shut down the others too. Now, we know that that's, there are some problems with that. We know there's at least 20 layers of aquifers confined under it right now. But that's not important because the law already stipulates this as a, you know, as a sub-area, and that's what the lawyers will go with. So... <clears throat> Getting to the bottom line, 30,000 acres of potatoes, highest solid potatoes raised in the basin, the ones that make the French fries, 30% of production is an imminent potential of being terminated. How awful. Okay, okay and so, that. so that's why you say that's the problem, and the second tap is the solution, but right? That's going to have an impact on the world. Yeah, down there, there really is only two. There's only two answers and outcomes to this scenario. Not directly, but indirectly. Indirectly, but it would affect, for instance, city of Connell is in that sub aquifer area. Yeah, the city would lose its wells. Um, a lot of the irrigation wells around Connell are in that sub aquifer area. <laughs> yeah, it goes below Connell. Yeah. Yes, down below Connell. So the only, I mean, it, so. Just supposing uh -huh. this went to court, yes, is it feasible to assume that probably Connell could keep water and not none of the farms could, or no. what do you think they just so come say the law exempt. is the law? It, and it comes down to when when is your water right? What is the priority date in your water right? So that when the, if they had wells that were drilled prior to all these other guys' wells, mm -hmm. they would keep them. Well, the, the all the stuff that we did on that sole source aquifer to disprove that. Theory, would that have any bearing on this? No. Not Why do you say that? Not immediately, because because this is a this is a legal definition. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and even though it's based on faulty information, Would you have to you'd have to go to court and take the current information and take this to task in a lawsuit and take it down and then bring it back up with something else. And in the meantime, they have to use okay, this because this is existing law. Legislation you can get to legislation change the law? To change it. Yes, you could. However, the this problem is, is it doesn't change the pragmatics because once the bowl is empty, it's empty. And if these guys are down to 500 feet, the bowl is it's empty. Gonna, yeah. It just makes yeah. no difference. There's no water. So whether the whether the courts shut it off by 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 litigation or it just plain measurement it's over, it it's over either way. It's just yeah. a matter of time. Yeah. But you're assuming it. there's only one bowl. But well, no, we're, no, but we're I mean, not the law. assuming it, but the law assumes, the law assumes, the law assumes there's, there's only one bowl. That's yeah. correct. And and the answer to your question about that is is you'd have to take current information, go to task with either the courts and prove it wrong, or to go to the legislation and have them change it. Odds are that my guess is what people are telling me, that there's no legislator in the world right now that wants to touch this at the table. Right, goal. because they it's won't be elected and because the environmentalists are so... But strong. it's really immaterial, because the water's gone. That's not a question. I mean, th- there is some, there are some wells on the periphery that haven't dropped very much. And, and they're junior, and, and they'll get shut off, and maybe that's, a, maybe that's wrong, maybe that's right, I don't know. But that'll happen anyhow. But it'll happen anyway. But the consequence of this is what I'm trying to get down to is, is this is all sad and everything, but uh, the loss of 30,000 acres of the highest quality uh, potato, French fry producing potatoes uh, will have a very significant effect on the processing industry in the, in the, in the basin. And because how they've been threatening to leave us for the last 15 years during negotiations, and they haven't increased the capitalization on any one of their plants in the last, well, there's no new plants. The potential of the potato industry abandoning this area is quite high. Where would they go? They've already Canada? gone. Canada. There, were, there, there are plants. Mexico. There are hundreds of plants throughout the world. Um, McCain's has thirty some plants. Yeah, they've got theirs all over. And, the, and Simplot and and a lot of guys are going to Mexico, and Good I know farmers are going to Mexico. Matter of fact, in the Capital mm-hmm. Press last weekend, there's an article that uh, quotes Simplot. And they've just announced their uh, plans to build a hundred million dollar plant in Russia. They're not spending a hundred million dollars here, I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> and not spending any money here. And they already closed the Simplot plant, and the Haber and Idaho plant was closed uh, 90, 120 days ago. And they said they closed it because it was 30 years old and they didn't want to upgrade it, and that's it. So. And they're selling the one in the Freda? They or sold that Bo- to National Foods. But Bo- they're they? Plant, sure. uh-huh. The Boardman plant's going to be closed. Well, yeah, in December. But um, that one, they afraid that they l- let out a notice that don't none of the employees need to imply, apply. None well, yeah, it's other, because they sold it to National. Yeah, but they I their mean, own National is, yeah, National has their own people, so right. they spoke for you. Correct. Point is, that gets down to where we're going. That's all interesting information. Well, that's, that's really interesting. It's not good, but I mean, it's interesting. Well, it's... It's... it's we need to know it. Whatever it is. So, that gets me to this. That is a letter that um, the Columbia Basin Development League Steering Committee recommended uh, that the uh, county commissioners sign and then the Guama board, which Frank participated in last Thursday, reviewed it, and they voted unanimously to ask to suggest that the county commissioners sign it. Now, so, what this is is uh, basically that little map I showed you. Uh, it's basically asking for all the documentation that supports that little map, that Odessa Severian map, the, the last 40 years worth of readings on those 200 wells that tell them how far it's dropped down and the rates they're declining. And the final bullet, the fourth one, is basically how, how do you see this problem? You know, what's the problems with regulation? You know, what? give us some explanation of what's happening. And that request for information, then that little packet that we'll be getting. And I, I went up to DOE in Spokane, and I talked with Keith Stoffel and, Mark. and with... Uh, and with uh, his boss, and uh, I, this was the result of that conversation. 
and the conversation, uh, the, the letter is uh, because uh, we talked about uh, the information I just described to you as important for the area to come to grips with, the entire area, to come up with a solution. Uh, there Again, I repeat, there are only two solutions at, available at the moment. One of them is uh, bring river water in to replace that 140,000 acres plus or the termination of the 140,000 acres because there's ultimately there's no water there. That's, that's all there is to it. So Keith <coughs> said that they've been discussing uh, holding an open public meeting somewhere, Ritzville, Fellow, State, something, inviting all the stakeholders in and explaining it to them. However, they recognize that if the DOE were to hold the meeting, the expectation of those in the area would be that they held it prior to them regulating and turning it down. So they know that they, there would be um, uh, there would be agendas attributed to them for holding that meeting. So they're fear, fear to hold the meeting because they're afraid of, of uh, beginning a stampede to their lawyers kind of a scene. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> we talked about it, and I suggested, I said, well, this, the Columbia Basin Development League and the, and the energy around the second half of the project is building. What if you were to get this information out as a as a side addition information to that process, and there it wouldn't take on the agenda of uh, shutting down the Odessa sub or anything like that. They they thought that was a grand idea, <clears throat> and so I took the idea back to the Development League's steering committee. They discussed it. That's and it went to the Guam board, and they discussed it. And uh, Grant County has already signed it. Um, Adams County uh, talked to them Monday afternoon. Uh, they want to sign it. However, Richard was sick, so he won't be back till Monday, so they're going to sign it Monday. And then I've got an appointment to go up to Lincoln County on the 19th. So you want a motion on this? I have, to have a motion. I move the approval of a letter to Keith Stoffel, Program Manager for uh, the Department of Ecology in the Eastern Washington Division, requesting um, information as listed. I'll second the motion. Um, uh, what concerns me even uh, more than this, or not moment. necessarily more, but as much, is once a ruling would be made on these, what effect would it have on the drawdown Who? of these wells out here? Uh, um, this is a, if this any, is if they aquifer. shut it down, our this level is, should go up. This is from a coalition. This is a different aquifer, isn't it? Pardon? Down here, isn't this a different? Depends aquifer? on how deep you go. But it, and it is. Who draws from where? But it's it's water law. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Right? We'll probably start something down here. Oh, you want a copy, don't you? Yeah. But that, you know, and as first in time, first in right, it has always been mm-hmm. water law, as I've understood it. But I'll never forget when Jim Jessenick was Secretary of Agriculture, so they said in the States that we're really looking at that differently. And I think you both, you ladies, were at that same meeting, said so we're looking yeah. at that differently now. Mm-hmm. And that really concerned me. They, I mean, they Guam, did, and then that failed. Does Guam not have um, stationary? Yeah. Well, how will we get that under this? We won't. Oh. You have to understand that uh, building a coalition is a challenging job. Mm-hmm. And uh, who would be opposed to this? Do you don't want it being Many the people. Position? They're opposed to Many people are opposed disposition to disposition on it? Yes. Uh, local coalition building is a very interesting process. And, uh, and this development league has some stakeholders in its beginning. And they are very, very keenly. Um, uh, concerned that the Guama will just take them over. So I've gone into the group with the that will work for you and do whatever you wish us to do, and and we've been doing that mm-hmm. until we take them over. <laughs> no, no the mind. development league, if you go to those, well, you've gone to those meetings, That's man. The they are getting a full house now, where you used to have eight people going to those. Well, meetings. they get a full house and then they don't. I mean. Mm. They had at the steering committee meeting a week ago uh, recognized that, you know, it was just a little group of the same people all the time, so they need mm-hmm. to build coalitions. So they have to build a coalition of all the stakeholders in the area. Mm-hmm. So they build a small committee to, to, to build coalition, and that's me. Mm-hmm. I'm a coalition builder. You're the coalition builder. But I really can't understand if a person that would sit down and gave me a thought why he would be opposed to something like that. Yes, there are many reasons. I'll give you some reasons. Uh, many producers in the first half of the basin do not want additional acres of hay, potatoes, and et cetera produced. So they, they're in opposition to what they feel is the local competition to their markets. Um, that's what destroyed the, that's what destroyed the second half of the project the first time. 
actually what we found out. <clears throat> uh, secondly, there are there are some uh, innate built-in animosities and jealousies amongst producers. I mean, there are producers out here that other producers in here have lost contracts to would just as soon they just dried up and blew away. But, but having said that, Paul, and I understand all the involvement with the individuals, but we need the processing plants here. Most of these guys don't understand this yet. And this is something, if they understood that, I don't see how they could they be opposed People don't uh, That's correct. face those facts. I don't, yeah. they, you know, it's they been... They maybe want to make their million and run. Well, right. it's been... That's one thing. It's, yeah. it's been my experience that they just say, oh, that won't happen. And Correct. they just won't. So face it. one of the things I've done is uh, involved the Pat Bosch and Potato Commission. He's agreed to take to his board tomorrow, I believe, the request to engage in the short term uh, an, an econo economist to write up the uh, economic impact of what I've just told you today. And I need to have that in writing, you know, soon. And next, mm -hmm. see, the problem is, is you really can't go out and tell all these first half guys all this story I've just told you, and it, without them saying, who figured that out, you? And then it becomes your for yeah. See, I can't do that. I can't go out and say, Paul Stoker says, and have everybody believe it, because it just doesn't work that way. You need to have a By WSU ag economist, yeah. or, or you have to have somebody uh, sponsored by the Potato Commission, or somebody write up a big fat paper that says just what I told what you. Doing, but yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> then, yeah. and then I can quote that paper and say, mm -hmm. the experts say, yeah. and the potato processors agree, that if this happens, they're going to handle it. Now, when that, if I go out and say it by myself, well, you know, I'm wearing a tie and I'm official and everything, but... <laughs> That's what Stoker wants. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's what it is. Not the same scenario, but we've seen this deal in the asparagus business. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to have a Ph.D. to see that coming. It might have helped if someone with a Ph.D. had said this is going to happen, but it's happened. Well, I'll be honest with you guys. There are people... There, there have been, there's been a transition in the potato industry in the last 12, 15 years from the 100, 2, 300 acre spud grower to the 2, 3, 4,000 acre spud grower. And there's animosities in that, in that transition. And this area we're talking about is a bastion of those bigger growers because mm -hmm. they don't have to worry about the 960 laws, et cetera. So to say that there's animosity from this group to that group, sort of understates it, but it's there. It, it, this is a little bit like herding a, a, a tank full of barracudas and trying to figure out which one's going to eat the rest of them. So, But without them all working together, we're not going to get anywhere. People ask me, well, what about the environmentalists and what about the federal government? And, I, and my answer to them is... Your biggest fear. Don't worry about <laughs> these guys. it. You, you, these guys aren't even rowing in the same boat yet, so if you can't get in the same boat, you don't have to worry about going to see an environmentalist. Look, they, Without the government, the secondary benefits of having irrigation out there and the dollars spent are just tremendous. You know, and whether you're a farmer or not, having that go out is going to impact the Some country. good things I can tell you. The, first of all, the, the stakeholders in the, in the Clean Based Development League have all indicated that their 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 goal, their long-term goal, is the entire 500,000 acres, not just this 100,000 we're talking about here. That's number one. Secondly is, I will tell you that uh, numerically, uh, for 500,000 acres, it would take about a million 500,000 acre feet of water to supply it, roughly, uh, with no losses, so just you know, that much. Doing the numbers, uh, circle conversions and IWM will probably easily accommodate from the first half at least a million acre feet of savings over the last 15 to 20 years. So. <clears throat> There is very good credibility to believe that when we finally do get all the barracudas roaring in the same direction, that when you get to that point of saying to the hydropower people and to the and to the other people that we want a chunk out of your river, that you can justifiably go back and say, well, what's the problem? We've already saved enough water to do yeah, the same. Yeah, that half. study that says that the water savings should be really... Yeah, that too. Big help. I think Banks Lake is probably about 800,000 acre feet. I think that was a figure we give them. Okay. It's, it's, we've got to give you an idea, and you know how big Banks Lake is. Yeah. So, there you go. Well, well you're certainly a barrel of good news. Yeah. Thank you. 
Don't invite him back again. No, I, yeah. I don't think you invited him this time, did you? No. This, this is Who invited time you anyway? Yeah. I don't know his reception. You're nothing but trouble. And this is the second time I've heard this presentation, but that's a good presentation. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's very, very good. Informative. It's worrisome. It's very informative. Yeah. Yep. You mean... You mean to tell me that you think that there have been quite a few people with their head in the sand for about 30 years about mm. this issue? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Is it time we start You know, we've, heard, we've heard this water going down for years and years. 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 We've heard that for a long time. Remember, even inside of the, of the group itself, there's differences because there are wells that haven't dropped hardly at all. And those guys are running around going, don't touch anything, don't, don't, fuss, don't mess with it. Because I'm, you know, everything's fine. Well, you know? since you put the dams in out here, you go out in some of these areas, the wells will come up. Right. Oh, yeah. There are wells that are in the vicinity of Banks Lake that the water in the table in the, in the well mirrors the image of the water table level in the lake. We've got mm -hmm. some out by Snake River that do that also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take any genius to figure, figure out what's happening there. Yeah. What that is. <laughs> so those guys really are, you know, they're... Going well. I already have my pump, and it's already working fine, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's don't upset the. Animal. Yeah, but the ones that are inside the is what's interesting. The ones that are inside the the legislative boundaries, that make no difference whether or not you're connected to Bank Lake or not. Legally, you're toast. There you go. Well, it's been fun, guys. Well. I told you in the past we'd take you down these roads. Mm -hmm. But somebody needs to start on it. I mean, yeah. It's just it's just getting worse. It won't go away. No, it won't go away. Oh, it's not. Well, hey, we've guys. had some heavy-duty presentations today. <laughs> oh. You might as well just close the door. <laughs> <laughs> the sunshine in. It's a pretty nice day. Take a vacation. The wind's, the wind's blowing. blowing. Oh, that's true. Oh, dear. Yeah, well, well, thank so. you, gentlemen. Okay. It's thank always you. a delight. Good to see you again. Thanks, guys. Yes. Uh, how much doom and gloom do you have for us? <laughs> I don't think I can handle any more myself. I think I'll drop kick you out of here if that happens. <laughs> right. Chris got so many negatives after his attendance record here. Huh? Well, the reason why I didn't really say anything about it is because it was supposed to be open Monday. So we postponed Oh, yeah, we postponed it. Because of the... And it was advertised. Yeah, yeah. Really. So, and there's nobody here anyway. We did receive... <coughs> oh, wait. So if you want to send it in the mail... And, you know, just kind of jump way ahead... I have an evaluation, and it does address attendance. God, so. let me. I want. Let me. <laughs> it's in your. It's in your package. <laughs> we'll see you again. Okay. Bye. Okay. Let I'll me evaluate, that evaluation. your friend. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I hand. Okay. Yes, I'm the authority on things like that. So we're opening the meeting for the opening. For cell tower site. How come we got two here? Well, we have three sites that are available. Oh. Okay, the first one's from Singular Wireless. Is, is that C? C. C I N G U L A R. Bids for plot C of track. Cellular communications facility would like to bid 450 a month uh, will agree to the following conditions that apply specifically to plot C and that's all listed here. Yeah, the conditions are, are in the packet and, you know, basically to kind of give you an idea where we are with that, um, I talked with Darren. The whole process seemed a little confusing, but the conditions with Plot C, to make a long story short, is that is only for an equipment shelter only. Mm -hmm. There's only one plot that will allow for um, a tower. So <coughs> that's why it's written up for Okay, and the second one's from wire Wireless Facilities Incorporated of Tequila, Washington. Um, that bid um, um, 
Verizon Wireless wishes to submit bid to Plot A. Please note that this bid includes proposals related to tenant improvement for the adjoining plot size B and C, and they submit a bid of 14400 annual rent for a five-year lease of um, Site A. Basically, that's 1200 a month for us. Look at those figures. And the. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the, the conditions of it, uh, according to our prosecuting attorney's office, is that the lease is for 30 years. However, we have to renegotiate every five years. That's why I did that. That was mentioned in there on the five year. Five year. And the way it's, it's stipulated in our in our proposal is that uh, that every five years the county will open it up to renegotiate um, the monthly rent or the an the yearly rent, but it will not exceed the the city CPI over the five year period. So. Their, their, their maximum risk would be whatever the CPI is would be the increase to the... They added the CPI. If it's 2% a year, it would be 10% of the year. That's, yeah. that's correct. But the lease is for a 30-year. <clears throat> and talking with... Uh, May I ask a question just for clarification right now? On the second bid was from wireless facilities of Tuckwilla, but then the, the bidder inside was Verizon Wireless. Is that right? Uh, same agency, but it is Verizon, yes. Okay. Also known as Verizon, I guess you could pick. You know, what, what's, what's kind of crazy about this is that these two different bids, one is cellular, the other is Verizon, they sit pretty much back to back in the same office. Mm -hmm. So, with that, um, I give the general specifications as to what the county is going to require. And, and you can go through that, or I can go through it for you. It just depends on what you want to do. Well, do you have a resolution? No. And what this is, is I have to come back and basically uh, review these, and then we'll come back for a board of bid next Monday, I believe, okay. is when it's scheduled okay. for it. Uh, we have to do contract discussions. Um, it's not negotiating. The, the, the price has been set through the bid process, but the contracts have to be developed. And once that's all done, I'll come back with a award letter next week awarding them these plots, and then we will do contracts. I'll come back with a resolution and contracts for signatures. Okay. Sounds good. If I want to go in the courthouse, how do I get in if I can't get in? You just wish just my here. punch here. Yeah. Yeah, punch in. They're having problems with the equipment down there, but just use your keypad just like you normally do. I thought they closed it on. Uh -uh. Well, they, it's it's the doors are locked or should be locked. Yes. But you can still go. Uh, an employee can walk in. There. Okay, well, I thought they, keypad. I thought they closed off the keypad though. No, well, actually, it was they just malfunctioning. Yeah, they, I they, think. they've been having problems with the equipment. All right. It has not, and I've heard that too. And it's not, it's mm -hmm. not shut down. It's broke. So they're having problems with the public safety of the building doors, too. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to be careful. You have to make sure that you have an A1 or a, a gen, grand master key, because if you go in the basement and you go upstairs, we've closed those doors off to where the, the uh, public cannot go downstairs any longer. So if you go upstairs, mm -hmm. make sure you have a key, or just plan on going out the front door. Yeah. Um, but you can't, unless you have a key, you can't get back down the basement. Or you shouldn't be able to get down in the basement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, this is this is a good thing. Okay. Okay. Um, Thanks, Martha. <laughs> oh, is that what she said? <laughs> yeah. This will be very valuable to okay, us. Okay, thank you. Because I don't want to slide <laughs> into that one. Okay. Well, um, so twelve hundred a month and four four fifty a month. Just short of twelve twenty thousand a year mm -hmm. is what we'll bring in. On one is the cell tower, and the other is location on the cell. Well, one, the plot A is for a cell tower and an equipment uh, shelter. Um, and that's what they're doing right now, aren't they? Building. No, they're not putting any of that in at this point. Nothing Actually, what, that, yeah. what we did, if you go into the RV park, you'll see that there's still a dirt area yeah. in there. Well, they um, were digging with backhoes and stuff. Well, they, they were connecting the main irrigation line oh, through okay. there. Um, I basically shut down 
all the construction with the tent sites and the irrigation and everything other than the main line coming through in the valves. For us to put it in and have it ripped out was a lot, was just a waste of money for us. So uh, they're required to put the landscaping in in this proposal here. Verizon is. They're, they're required to put chain links and privacy fences and put the landscaping that matches the RV park out there. But just around their little facility. No, in that whole plot. That plot well, I mean, area. that's. Right. That's just that small area there. Right, yeah. right. Well, and, and it's pretty good size, I think. Well, you like. can see the maps. I mean, they're, they're uh, plot A, for instance. Unless, unless there's been more more run. Just that one. Grass thing. put in. Well, it's, yeah, it's just, just that, that little grass area right in there. Yeah, what page is that on the room? Uh, three. Basically, you got about 50, 80, 100. you got about 110 feet. Well, just that small circle. Yeah. Anyway, but th there's so, there the grass. It put the irrigation sprinklers in. Put in the other landscaping. words, it's just here. But what happens out in here? That's all pavement. That's all the black pavement that's out there right now. When that you go out to the right RV up. park, you can take a look at it. That dirt area is what we're talking about. We're looking in looking at the way this is drawn. We would be looking north and west on that thing. That's on the east side of the facility. Okay. Yeah, I know what the court's at because I was up there Tuesday morning. Well, actually, you would be looking at the southeast corner of the parking at lot. At the southeast corner of the lot. Right. But I said we would, would be looking if you're looking up at Right. But it, anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's their responsibility to landscape it and put the bushes and the trees and the sprinklers in there, and then it's the county's responsibility to maintain the landscaping. We're going to provide the water for it. Um, but plots A, B, and C, they're going to be located in that area. Yes. Everything, A, B, and C. Yes, all, all of that. But see, we only have bids on A and C, so B, the county has the center of B. But they're still going to landscape it. We'll have to discuss that with them. They probably will. But but actually, in all actuality, they don't, they're not required to. So Horizon a has A, Singular has C, Unless we can convince Singular to move to B, and then we'll just take over C ourselves. Why don't we do that? Yeah, I think it's you. That would be I better because we got that dead spot in there. That would be a problem. Yeah. Well, we, we we would take care of it. We wouldn't have a dead spot in there. But we, I mean, it would just blend better yeah, with the fences and everything else. I'll have them do that because okay. we want to put it all in the same fencing and, and then, yeah. and, and then okay. if nothing else, we can put a swing set in that one area if that's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Uh, courthouse, uh, landscaping, and annex. But a lot of building on the screen set. All of the all of the bushes, plants, everything in the courthouse is going to all be demoed out, except well, and I need to talk about those trees too. I know that the the board decided to to go ahead and knock those those blue spruces out. Um, I had a arborist come in and take a look at it. Um, basically, the company that fails me is to what their name was, but they looked at it and they said that uh, trees are in pretty bad shape. Uh, not, in his thoughts, not salvageable. Um, the, it, but it, he said... Are you talking about the big ones? The big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, he says it would probably cost about the same amount of money to get in there and clean them all up as it would be just to take them down. Now, why are we discussing this? Well, because he wanted to have some backup when oh. the public... Oh, okay. If there's a public outcry for it, we, we've looked into it and, and determined this to... That you, you know, didn't just go out there and yeah, massacre those four for no trees. Reasons. Okay. So the root systems in a couple of them are in pretty bad shape. Um, there's no guarantee by going in there and cleaning them up that they won't fall down. Mm -hmm. um, like the however, other one on the north side. Well, if you look at the ones on the north side, a couple of years ago, the furthest one mm -hmm. blew out, and then the next one blew yeah. out. Now we have those other two, and one's leaning pretty bad. Yeah. You know, if one was a wind block for the other, then it's just kind of dominoing down through there. Maybe they'll stay up forever, but on the other but hand... But you've got... But we don't know that, and... And he doesn't and know it's that. Either. Why put the expense into a tree like that when it doesn't look good? And we have history of its brothers and mm -hmm. sisters. So uh, that's the only reason why I'm bringing this back up. Mm -hmm. Good idea, so, Fred. Um, now, so I'm ready. assuming that you still get probably ready. want yeah. to have the blue spruces taken out. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, okay. um, the other, the landscaping, all the trees, 
or all the little bushes and shrubs and flowers and everything that's all around the courthouse is all going to be ripped out. Some of the employees have asked if there's a problem if they come in and take some of those trees and bushes and flowers home with them. I don't personally see a problem with it unless you do. The, the contractors could come in there and kill them anyway. Well, we, we're we doing something with the rose bushes, uh, yeah, right? We moved the bushes. We okay, the, the rose bushes. bushes are gone. This is the other bushes. So I don't have any objections. I do see a problem, though. Of employees coming in and taking those out, and uh, there will be something we haven't even thought of on that. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, the employees are going to dig them up and then. Well, the take employees them. ask if they can take some of those bushes. Which ones? Oh, just the those ones that go around the courthouse. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the flowers and some of the the hedges. Uh, uh, we we better come up with some kind of a precision deal where they yeah, do it yeah, at one time. Or whatever. I think uh, yeah. well, I think we better run it by the prosecutor because we're gonna we're gonna because, have trouble with it somehow. Yeah, um, you know, the public maybe need an auction, and the public uh, would want to. If uh, that's the case, it'd be better just to let the contractor come in and knock them all out. Well, or let, or let them go to the contractor and get them from the contractor. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that's that's what, I'll give you an example. I bought a, um, a typewriter, a manual typewriter, when we went to electric. They were trade-ins to Basin that's Typewriter. That's got to be in the 20s. Uh, to Basin Typewriter, and I bought, the, I bought it from them. I paid them what the trade-in value was. Mm -hmm. And and then because I couldn't buy it from the county direct, and That's and I feel very very strongly about this. So I think I think contractor, if he wants to allow the people to come in and yeah. dig them out, okay. or he dig them out, then he can tell them. When yeah, that becomes the yeah, property of the contractor yeah. once it's bid. So yeah, that's yeah. a good and way to I go. Think, I think that'll resolve. That would put us out of it. We won't yeah. have yeah. a hassle over it. That's potential. Because I know. Employees took uh, rose bushes when we we changed the entrance and did the mm -hmm. uh, from uh, the west side, you know, into the public safety building yes. and did add on. And there was a lot of criticism. Oh, there'll be a lot of hard feelings. People will be mad. And yeah. um, I okay. want to take pencil out of this place. Uh, <laughs> no, you're you're right. Yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next one, the annex uh, landscaping. Actually, Piper would like to bring in uh, those half wine whiskey barrels, head. whiskey barrels, whatever they are, and she wants to put some flowers and plants out in front, you know, of the front entrance of the of the, pub, of the annex here. Mm -hmm. She will maintain them. She just wants to have some out there, and she's asking if it would be all right with the board to, to do that. And we're not held liable if something happens to those. No. Some no. dark night. Okay. No, she just wants to put those out. I there. think that's a lovely idea. Yep. That's sweet of her. But if she, I warn her, if she's growing marijuana in them, she's in trouble. <laughs> okay. I won't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Interfund loan uh, extension. Back last year, uh, when the county went to uh, purchase the bypen system, we took a hundred thousand dollar loan from uh, Enhanced 911. It became due um, March 31st. Um, at this particular time, current expense can't handle the repayment of that. So I've basically created a resolution. Uh, if, if you so agree, to extend it to be paid on uh, September 1st. So is, oh, so what's this resolution? That's what I'll show Okay. You didn't assign a number to anything. Bridget came down, and so I, there were two on the resolution, part on the consent agenda, so that, that's where I'm showing it to be. 178. Okay. Can we, I'm, oh, go ahead. I move approval of resolution number 178. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Not sure I like page six. What's that going to do to us? Yeah. 
if you're ready to talk about it, I can get started. Okay, but just remember, if somebody doesn't like it, you do have an evaluation on here. Okay. Um, page, basically what page six is is, is uh, a five-year average of what the activities that's been going on over at the juvenile center, and then the very bottom is basically a five-year average of, or six-year average of population. Um, the population is... Now, their numbers to me are a little bit wrong because I show, <clears throat> I show if you were to average all of these different uh, um, activities down to the very bottom, Franklin County's portion is 27.6%, and they're showing that the average population is 26.6%. So, and all I'm trying to say is that, that actually what they're proposing at this time, population-based, would give Franklin County a 1% advantage, and I'm sure if Benton County did the math, they'd probably see that too. But, but what we're, we're trying to do is to stop having those huge swings by to either Benton or Franklin County at budget time for the juvenile center. <laughs> and so they're, they're proposing that they go on population. Um, What's the, what, is, what is fair then going on population on this thing? It's fair. I think it's fair to do that because, you know, you're going to have the swings back and forth. It's, it's almost... But when, now, what do you take the population from? Who gives you the population from? I, I, I would it's think over. whoever the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it would have to be official population, the census. But see, if we go back to 2000 census, it, it isn't accurate. Right now, the 2000 census were about 49,000 or something, and we're about 53.6. And, and this is a real big issue when you come into some percentage. Well, you would... Actually, our, our, our discussions were is that you review it every three to five years. Well, couldn't we say we'll take it uh, off the from the Office of Budget and Finance or something like that? Every The yearly... There has to be a criteria that they establish. Sure. You know, actually right now it's just open for discussion. It's, it, and really what I'm, I'm looking for is direction from you as to whether or not what you would even consider assess? it. Assessed evaluation too. Or look at the assessed evaluation. That would be up to. I mean, that's what they do for, for the, the judges. judges. Yeah, we talked about that too a little bit. But I think what I'm looking for more here is this is regardless of where you take your population base from. You know, I mean, it would have to be a credible report. It couldn't be just some, you know, some, some. some well, it has business. to be something that's put yeah. out from the state on an annual basis that we get the and I, and I think we could agree to that, but I, all I'm really looking for here is, is are you are you willing to pursue this with basing your percentages off the population with reviewing it every three to five years to see if it's, you know, it's, uh, it's still falling in line fairly truly. You know, there would be, there would be a... a Protection as far, and it would protect both Benton and Franklin County from having these huge pop, uh, percentage swings at budget time, and it would be easier to budget based off this, and then we can look at it, you know, like I said, three to five years down down the road, and see if there needs to be an adjustment coming for the next three to five year period that comes in. That kind of criteria, whether those are the exact figures or not, I think is good, Fred. I do too. Okay. Eva? I guess. Okay. Well, you know, well, David, you want back to some statistics, you know, that... In other words, we're, we're just doing this right now. We, have, we haven't decided that indefinitely. We're just looking at some yeah, options. That's all, that's all we're doing is we're well, just trying to, to find a direction to move in. If these are the directions, and we can still work out the details on it. So, okay. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell uh, Sharon and Benton County that we're, we're are willing to look, look into this. I'm going to have to leave here by about 11.30 or not too much after. Well, I'll be done with you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to give you an update on the property out, out by track. I talked with uh, Rick Smith apparently Monday night. City Council approved the purchase of that property at $1.58 million. Um, they're going forward with closing on it. They, he said they may be a little, they may have a little bit of an extension on the closing because there are still a few things that need to be worked out 
but uh, the, the developers for that particular lot uh, that we're talking about um, has signed the documents. They was going to, to Gary to sign the documents uh, Tuesday. I haven't heard anything different, so I'm assuming it did get done. Closing is a 60-day period. It may go to 90 days, but it is moving forward. So that's at $1.58 million. And $10 a square foot is pretty easy to figure out the dollars on that. Um, I did mention to uh, Rick as far as what his thoughts were for that lot uh, nine that uh, they backed out of. Um, he said that he had quite a bit to do with this one particular lot that we're talking about and that once this is all done, he wants to come back and talk to the county as far as what the county wants to do with the remaining three lots. So I said, you know, when that's all done, <clears throat> he's going to send us a letter. I, I asked him, I wasn't sure if the city would be willing to, to continue on, and he says, well, I think we probably would, but let's get this one deal closed, and then we'll get back to the county. So, so that's kind of an update on that property out there. Um, the reason I put this county vehicle here, the vehicle that I drive, um, I'm going to Chelan, and I basically took mileage out from my own vehicle. And the reason why I did that is because I don't trust the county sheriff's car. It's, it's making some pretty funny noises, and I know that transmission. I don't know that the transmission is going to go out on me, but I think you I told you I, was, there. I was driving down the road, and I thought I had a flat. And I pulled over, and just as I come to a, just before I came to a, st a stop, I heard a pop, and everything was driving just fine again. So I mm. took off down the road. And uh, I got out and checked the tire, no problem. I drove off, everything was fine. Thought, That's weird. I never had that happen to me before. But, but I, I hear problem. I hear noises in the transmission. The transmission is not quite shifting when it should. And, and it's all right to drive around and, around here, but I don't think I want to get out of town and have the county have to deal yeah, with it. Yeah, they check, on, check that out at the public work. They can. They can. But, and I'd be happy to take it out there. Why don't you do that? Go on, I have and I'd be happy to do it. I guess my thought is, is until there's definitely a something, you know, I know I'm going to take it in there and they're going to probably say, gee, yeah, everything's fine, just, you know, because we can't. And I've taken it to many mechanics to say the same thing. Unless it's happening at the time you have it in there, then they're going to say, we, we don't know what it is. And they're just going to send it off to a transmission dealer anyway. So until there's definitely, I mean, but if you guys want me to take it in, I will. I'm no, happy with I don't it, want you to take it. I just, wa I just want to take it in when there's definitely something. Oh, I don't want you to take it time. off to Chelan. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't think that would be a smart idea for me to do that. <laughs> but you know, while you're gone, you could just have them go look at it and get their answer. And no, that's then fine. Then you probably keep driving it around until you... Well, well, it won't cost anything to have them look at it. Oh, yes, it yeah, will. It costs They're going to charge us about to. $55 to $65 well, an hour shop time for that. It shouldn't take, not to analyze it, it shouldn't take them very long. You know, Frank, I don't want to sound like I'm arguing with you here, but they're going to just tell me to take it down to the transmission dealer because they don't do transmissions. They take it down to that uh, Mr. Transmissions over at the King City. That's it, huh? And that, yeah, because they don't. We'll let it break down and then take it. Well, I figured that'd be, the, I mean, yeah. there's definitely well, a problem at that point. That might be the time we decide yeah. whether we keep it. Because in there this week, and it's $2,400. Oh. Yeah. You know, and, and kind of my thoughts on that car is if I can get it through this year, and I'm sure I can, I'll just take one of the other ones that come out and put yeah. that one and sell it, you know, so yeah. we'll get as much life as we can. I've kind of talked to Daryl about it, you know, when, when they surplus the next set, you know, we're, I'm not keeping the car until it just be, basically becomes worthless. I just trade it off and get another one and, and uh, try to hold the value that way. How um, long have you been driving that one? Not very long, is it? Well, I've had it for a few months. I haven't been driving it very much because uh, <clears throat> I'm having to chaperone my stepson back oh. and forth to school. Mm -hmm. I, you don't want to hear it, and I don't want to tell it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put him in a county rig, so it's been parked at my house quite a bit. Okay. Um, you know, it's the your favorite time of the year and mine. It's a time for my evaluation. I I narrowed this evaluation way down, and and so it's not just it's not the same standard one that you did. You may want to pull the other one back up, but I tried to just lean it more towards management, and not all the other stuff that goes in it. So uh, you know, and this doesn't have to be done right now. I want everything in. <laughs> Me too. 
Oh, I can do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> you can't get us to fill them out when everything's in there, so now we're full. Well, I just tried to get it down to where can't maybe... we just change your status and let it go at that? No, we, he needs to put that in his... He wants uh, it in his file. File. Well, yeah, I'd like... You know, actually, I, I would like to have an evaluation. I really would. Wow. And I know it's kind of, and I do evaluations all the time, and I know what you're thinking because I have the same problems. I don't hear Well, unless I see a problem, I don't see any. any well, just well, then you know that's personally. Well, I mean, we need to make some. Well, uh, then rubber stamp. Yeah, we need well, to make some documentation for him that says. Yeah. Can we do it tomorrow? You know, Can we get together tomorrow and do it? I can't stay today. I can come uh, back Saturday. Well, why don't we just each do it and just decide from out? Yeah. Do it Monday. Okay, that's fine. Let's do it Monday. But I, I would like to sit down. You know, if you do it or don't do it or whatever, I would like to just sit down during our regular session time and just have a discussion. Now, All right. uh, why is the April 16th date here? I mean, why aren't we doing it like the first of the month or something? Because the payroll begins April 15th, so it'll go back just to the to the, the mid payroll. Ability so to they need, a business to they need this. They need this um, change of status right away. Yeah, if you, yeah, if so you want to sign it. Well, let's and sign, I, I sign, sign it. Let's we sign can give you the change of status. Yeah, 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 we do that. Yeah, do other that on right. Monday. That so. doesn't need to be in minutes because it's a normal one, right? Mm -hmm. Do we? No, not okay. necessarily. Okay. I mean, it's it's not uh, uh, just as annual step. Right. Increase. Yeah. Is this just the? Um, do you just sign this, Neva? Yeah. Okay. Then do you need a motion? Yes. I move approval of change of status for um, Fred Bowen and uh, as stated, and the um, chairman's signature. From. Do you want to say from where? Seven five dash four to seven five. To seven five. And this is. Um, oh, I said as stated. Link the service increase. Okay. I'll second the motion, and I will aye it. Aye. Okay, all in favor? Aye. aye. There is some uh, reluctance on my part on the eyeing. I, the but then attendance to human relations has been... Yes, but that before. can be duly noted in the... In the um, evaluation. Does Mary get a copy of it? I won't need to go in the Okay. 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 Right. The courthouse bid. Right. Fred, let's hit this quickly here so we got... Uh, Oh, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I never did officially believe I came in to talk to you, I don't have my job, honey, about the bids. I and mean, I need the board to allow us to go out for bid um, to advertise the bids for the, the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm requesting that April 8th and 15th uh, advertisements be done. So moved. Second. Second. And then All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, April 22nd and 29th, there's walkthroughs from 7 o'clock until noon, and then May 5th will be bid openings. I know I came in and I told you about the dates, but I never... We didn't take any out. official action on that. So I, I'm glad you approved it because it will be in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> that's, that's quick. I if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have approved it. I, do we have an executive session, Brad? What's this? this is from March 17th minutes, the Basin City Sewer and Water. And have we have moved just, for approval on that? They've already been moved, but at the time, I couldn't listen to the tape again. And this is where Darren talked oh. after. Oh, okay. We're not moving, Brad. Said I wanted you to see it and see it. Okay. If well, I'll give you an update on my Chelan trip. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be beneficial. Yeah, it will be. Um, it will be. Yeah, it'll be good. Yes. And Mr. McPherson will be here. Oh, have a, oh I he's was not going. I was. No, he's not going. Okay. You, you basically didn't. And in yeah, his I think I'll feel better. About his it. office is too thin, and and I was not made aware of it, other than the fact that Greg was gone. Okay. Because I, I, he said Greg was gone. I said, well, you know, you could, you could probably get him. Yeah. Yeah. Is Greg just on vacation? Is that no, he's got appendicitis. Emergency surgery. Oh, well, I didn't know that. tell me these things? I thought what? I mentioned it. When no. The reason Greg was gone. Nobody's no. ever mentioned it. You when did he had emergency secrets. surgery when? I think Monday. He no. Went. no. Friday. Friday was sick. Yeah. Saturday he had the surgery. Oh, um, yeah. appendectomy. Yeah, and they were teasing him because he, oh, you just want to leave because it's pretty weather. And yeah. he said, no, I really do feel bad. Yeah, they took him in Friday night. And oh, God. Surgery Boy, that's dangerous. Okay, we're, okay. are we done? Thank you.
Well, Mary wanted. I, I just wanted, if that doesn't make sense to you, I mean, I just went back to the tape because I knew you needed that in the minutes. Well, when do we have to have that on the ballot for? May 18th, and that's all gone to Diana. It, it went to her that week, so it's in there. Yeah. I hope it's, I haven't double checked on it. Today's my last working day for Ever? six weeks, maybe. Six so, weeks? Well, my surgery's Monday, so. Oh, oh yeah. you're having surgery? I didn't her. know you had surgery. Was going to have surgery? I told you that I've told all of you at some point, <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, well, Mary, she did, you, you but I was all bad. If you thought, don't tell me the day before, I forget it. So, uh. Oh, where are you doing this? Oh. How are we going to get along without you? Yeah. We'll call you a lot. She'll be fine in, she'll be able to handle the phone in two, three days. Is you're going to find out you really can't. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll say we don't need you. Mary, when is your surgery now? I just Monday. It is Monday. Well, good luck in your surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say good luck. Surgery no, is no fun no matter what, I tell you. I don't know. I like going underneath the anus. I figured you would, but outside the soup, <laughs> anything else, Madam Chair. Did you make a motion on that, Mr. Brock? On which, the On the vouchers. Um, payroll for oh, I move for approval of the uh, payment of the Public Works payroll. I've already seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else? Motion carried. Uh, except, did you want... Is this just for my eyes on this? No, that's for everybody. Did you give... You gave everybody. everybody a copy. 